Let's go to the control tower. Bill Gazaway standing by there. Just turn this up. Okay. Fire up. Fire up. 24, uh, Tower, you want to have sitting in an idle for about a minute and a half? Fire up. Yes, sir. I can handle that. All right, you're, you're, you're on the gate closing in a uh, minute uh, 28. Uh, Joe, we're trying It'll to be a minute and a half hold after the engines have fired. It's been cool and wet. It's kind of important to have those engines right. We've seen a lot of engines that are very brittle at this time. Break, David, before the start of a race. Well, of course, on a warm day like today, it doesn't matter quite so much, but they do need to be warmed up. All right, crank them up there. Anytime you're ready. All right, 21, let's go with them. Fire up now. Gentlemen, start. Let's go. Fire up. Fire up. The command to fire the engines has been given. Got those steps down there and send and 41 back. cars uh, come to life. For racing fans, this is such sweet thunder. The field for the 21st, Daytona 500, ready to roll. They're closing gate seven. Mechanic once said, it is a choir of angels. Very deep-throated, but angels to them. The balloons going in the air. The Goodyear blimp is up. Everything's beginning to look good. The sun is coming out. <laughs> Bill France Weather waited until the last moment today. There you see the front row. Buddy Baker on the pole, car number 28. He's tried since 1961 to win this race. He came so close in 1973, so close a year ago in 78. Now in 79 will it turn around. And there is his arch nemesis on the front row. One of the Alabama gang, Donnie Allison. He's been here since 1967. He's never won this race, although he's won the Firecracker 400 on the 4th of July. And there you see row two with Cale Yarborough, the first man to ever win the national title three straight years with a junior Johnson car. And beside him, car number 88, the flamboyant and colorful one from Franklin, Tennessee, joining the Million Dollar Club last year, Darrell Waltrip. Then, in position number five, car number 27, rolling down pit road with our Race Vision CBS camera on board. The 1975 winner of this event, Benny Parsons, flanking Parsons in that row. The man, four-time Indianapolis champion, 1972 Daytona 500 champion from Houston, Texas, A.J. Foyt. Moving to row four in the seventh starting position, leader of the Alabama gang, defending Daytona 500-mile champion Bobby Allison in car number 15. And with him, Dick Brooks in car number 08. It'll be Richard Brooks starting in the eighth position from Porterville, California. Moving to ninth position today, the Silver Fox, David Pearson of Spartanburg, South Carolina. It'll be Pearson in car number 21. He's won this race in one of the most dramatic finishes in history. Can he do it again today? David Pearson in car number 21 starts inside of row number five. Flanking him will be the sensation of yesterday's sportsman race. This kid was behind two cars as they blew up inches away at 190 miles per hour. Then he had a tire cut down. He finally wound up six. But Mark Dale Earnhardt in car number two starting 10th as a rookie to watch in this race. The 11th position is a former rookie of the year, Ricky Rudd of Chesapeake, Virginia, in the junior Don Levy car today. He'll start 11th. Going in the 12th position from Wausau, Wisconsin, comes Dave Marcus. He'll be driving car number 02, a car he has entered and prepared himself. And then in the 13th starting position, the all-time champion name at Daytona, five times a winner of this event, Richard Petty in an Oldsmobile car number 43. In that same role with him, in the 14th position is Harry Gant, another rookie who qualified very well with car number 12 out of Taylorsville, North Carolina. And here is the rest of the field, 41 strong, as they go up on the banking for the first time behind the pace car. The field for the Daytona 500 is sprinkled this year with a host of rookie drivers. I'm looking to see Dale Earnhardt do extremely well in this race. He's done some fantastic jobs this week in other races. Row eight, Buddy Arrington from Martinsville, Virginia, and from Bellingham, Massachusetts, Jeff Bodine. Row nine is Bruce Hill out of Topeka, Kansas, and Louisiana's Skip Manning. In row one is the, uh, row 10 is the young Texan, Terry LaBounty. And beside him is another Alabama driver, Neil Bonnet, who won the LA Times 500 a year back. Then in row number 11 comes Grant Adcox and Johnny Utzman from Tennessee. Row 12 is Paul Fess and the longtime veteran Frank Warren in car number 79. In row 13, a kid to look out for, Dave Watson in time to come, and he is flanked by Rolf Jones. Row 14 is the kid that used to tear him up in Reading, Pennsylvania, Gary Ballou. And beside him from Portland, Oregon, Chuck Bowne, 
the uh, son of a great driver and uh, his dad, of course, or father-in-law is the great Herschel McGriff. Row 15, J.D. McDuffie and Bobby Wowak. Ken, the start is giving them the, uh, the one lap side to go down here. It seems incredible, but it looks like they're going to let them go on this slightly damp track. Well, there you see the rest of the field rolling through and we're getting ready. Jim Vandiver back here in row 20. Ronnie Thomas, last year's rookie of the year, all the way as the tailgater riding the shotgun position. The officials are moving back and what you're seeing now is it begins to lock in place on the live pictures from Benny Parsons' automobile. We'll be back with that in just a moment. The field begins to amass as they go down that 3,100-foot backstretch where we saw disaster strike in a terrible seven-car crash yesterday. The field rolling down through there at about 75, 80 miles an hour. Baker on the pole at 196.049 miles per hour, breaking Cale Yarborough's record, which had stood for seven years. They're going to a green and yellow this time. That means they will hold positions. It will allow them to escalate their speed with a pace car off the track, dry off this track a bit, and probably get eight, perhaps 10 laps at a pretty good clip, and then they will get a full green condition. Now you're watching live the 21st annual Daytona 500 here on CBS today. There you see that front row, Baker down low. That's our speed shot, and let me tell you, it's dripping when they come by at over 190 miles per hour, David Hawks. Yeah, within inches of that camera, as you say, at over 190 miles an hour, and during the race, we're going to see some fine shots from that camera. It's quite interesting the way NASCAR do this green and yellow business. Uh, they're just allowed to go out there, go quite fast, but of course they're not allowed to change positions at all until they get the full green, which should be 10 laps into this race. One of the circumstances which viewers should be made aware of now is the fact that all the inside of the track, that safety apron is extremely wet, so if a car slides off, it's going to take off like on a skating rink. Let's go to Brock Yates in the pits. Again, I've got Herb Knapp with me, the crew chief on Buddy Baker's Paul winning car. Herb, it said that Buddy gets tense a little bit sometimes at the beginning of these things. How's he feel today? Well, it's the coolest I've ever seen Buddy in my racing career. And he's talking, walking about this high most of the time. And maybe it's because that Spectre Oldsmobile is running so good and the engine performance so good and the, the oil that we use is performing so good, that Spectre oil. How about, uh, how about the, uh, this uh, humidity? You've had some changes in the weather right away just before the start. Have you made any corrections in this engine setup? My engine made, made changes for the, the weather change, and I mean, that's one thing that makes him so good. I mean, Buddy L. Wilson is one of the greatest engine men in the business. We change for the temperature. The tire wear is going to, I think, is going to be you know, a factor. I mean, good year. You're ready, huh? Okay. Herb's ready. Everybody's <laughs> ready down here. Back to you, Ken. They have been up all week. That team is so pumped. They, they did come in with new sponsorship this year. There's Benny Parsons' automobile. There's the shot. You're the passenger. You're riding with the Daytona champion, Benny Parsons. And that'll give you just a slight feeling of what it's going to be like when they put the pedal to the metal orbs. That's what they'll be doing in about 10 laps time. Of course, um, as you say, the infield now is terribly wet. So if anybody slids off, slides off into that grass, they're going to pick up speed awfully fast. About 60 miles per hour at the present time as they come by. The Baker car on the pole has done just an incredible job all week. Baker, as I've seen him over the years, is always tense, and he has been relaxed over the past few days. But how can anyone be relaxed when they know they're going to go for 500 miles here on this two and a half mile track? Earlier, we talked to the man who won this race one year ago, leader of the Alabama gang, Bobby Allison, about his strategy for today's 500. This is the just another race. Uh, I've won some and I've lost some, and. Uh, I'd like to win this one again, and I know it'd take uh, a little bit of luck on our part to win it this time. It took a little luck last year, and maybe it can happen again. Bobby Allison, hoping to make it two years in a row after coming here and struggling so many years. This track always defeating him, and it was the track year after year. It lurked there like a shadow over Bobby Allison. And then last year, driving for Bud Moore, they came home winners. Now we'd like to make it two in a row. Not only did they come home winners, of course, they came home winners from right near the back of the pack. He started off last year in 33rd spot. Under for Boarding Skies, live from the World Center of Speed. You're watching the, the laps being ticked off. They have just completed the fourth lap. They're working the fifth at the present time with a caution condition because of rain. Darrell Waltrip is right up there in the front of the field. What is his strategy in the early part of the race for car 88? 
the first two or three laps of any any race is the most hectic part. Uh, guys are sort of jockeying for positions and moving around a lot on the racetrack, and the guys in the back are trying to charge to the front, and of course everybody's trying. Once they get strung out, it's not so bad, but uh, seem like the first few laps, you're worried about the car. Is it going to handle all right? Is the engine running all right? Uh, those kind of things, and if, if if you're going to try to stay out of trouble and, and not have anything bad to go wrong, knock you out of the race right off. Well, today those thoughts are going to be even worse for Darrell and the rest of these starters in this field because the track has changed a lot since they last drove here on Friday afternoon. The rubber has all been washed off the groove and they're all going to be trying their own chassis settings. And of course, even the engine settings will be changed because it's so much more humid today than it's been all week. The report from the drivers out there is that the track is still very damp. They, of course, talk to their pit crews and then the pit crews can talk to the NASCAR officials so we know exactly what's going on all the time. The NASCAR officials are down in Buddy Baker's pits at the present time. He's reporting it is very damp. They have asked on the radio for either Donny Allison or for Darrell Waltrip to go out and run as rabbits and they're not too excited about that to go out and test the track right now. I don't suppose they are. Another thing that Darrell said there was the first few laps of the worst in the race. Of course they are for some reason or other racing drivers are so pumped up all the time that they always want to win on the first lap. But of course, at a track like this, it's absolutely essential to maintain contact with the fast car, so there is a lot of scrabbling around, because once you lose touch, you may never ever make it back up again, even in the 500 miles. So there's an awful lot of position scrabbling going on there. We have one change of drivers in the 35th position at the last moment. D.K. Ulrich has stepped out of the car, and Dick May of Watertown, New York, has started car number 40. D.K. Ulrich of Vero Beach, Florida, in a Buick automobile at the last moment, elected not to run, and Dick May of Watertown, New York, a longtime journeyman driver. He has the record in one race. He drove five different cars years ago down at Darlington. Dick May is now out on the track in car number 40. Field goes back into turn number one. And remember, they're going very slowly here. They're going about 90. Last lap was at 98 miles an hour. They're hardly moving. Five laps have been completed, 12 and a half miles into the Daytona 500, and they are running, if you're just joining us, live here on CBS Under Caution. There's Benny Parsons' car, and there you are in the passenger seat right beside A.J. Foyt down the 3,100-foot backstretch. And you won't have to imagine today, folks, what it's like when he hellhounds through there at over 190 miles an hour. Because we put that little monitor in there so he can position himself on the track properly so that he gets the full effect of the drafting and the wall and so that we get proper excitement. Car 88 is going to be a rabbit, they say, in one lap. Let's go to a thought from Richard Petty about strategy for this race. It looks like for me to win, I'm going to have to run wide open every lap and just hope that I can keep up, Ned. Uh, we're not really running that good, and we're not really running that bad. It's just the kind of a deal that there's so many people running basically the same speed as what we're running that uh, we're just going to have to run and try to keep up with the crowd and just hope that we get the good breaks and somebody else gets the bad break. Richard Petty looking for a good break after going for the first time in his career an entire season without a victory. Unheard of in the great Petty domain. He's always come through, but not in last year, except for one race on the Western NASCAR Tour at Phoenix, Arizona at the end of the year. But in the Grand National competition, the 30 races that are run for some $5 million annually, he went out scoreless in 1978. He's actually uh, had 45 races without a score unless you include the Phoenix race, which he doesn't seem to want to include. Well, it he's, isn't. He's Let's go to Brock Gates. He's today. Brock. Ken, we're at the Haas Ellington pit. He has been in touch with Donnie Ellison with his radio all the way around. Donnie reports that it's still wet coming off of four, and there's some dampness down the back straightaway. He reckons that maybe 10, 12 laps will be ready to go under full green. But in the meantime, it looks as if Darrell Waltrip is going to go out and run some hard laps in front of the pack. Up to you. There is Waltrip. He has been told to go out and try the track. Donnie Allison put a new rear end in car number one this morning. What do they do if Darrell Waltrip blows up? Who sues who? Well, that's exactly what happened to Buddy Baker here a few years ago. 1973, slight rain condition. They sent him out as a rabbit, and at the end, eight laps from the finish, the engine evaporated. Well, I was going to say, if he does four or five hot laps in about six laps at the end of the race, the thing expires. Be rather off-putting. Uh, as I said, the trouble with the track here is the bank parts dry out very quickly, but coming off turn four as the track flattens out to only five degrees of bank, 
course the water can sit there and of course you can sit on the back straight away as well. Once again you're in Betty Parsons car you get a little feeling for 31 degree banking the G's pulling down on your stomach and then you begin to roll out into turn number two and at 190 miles per hour your vision is rather limited and when you come off here and there are seven cars spinning as you saw yesterday you have less than one second to make a decision. Now and that, it had better be right. That camera is situated lower than the driver's head. One of the things you get when you're driving around the banking here is, of course, you can't see around the corner. Waltrip has been given the order to go out and be the rabbit. His pit crew has agreed, and the Die Guard Racing Team sent car number 88 out, and we're seeing a car at speed for the first time. Of course, this is a double-edged sword. It may, uh, it may hurt his car. On the other hand, he's going to get a a secret of how to set his car up on the new track before the others. Yeah, that's the trade-off. Yeah, that is the trade-off. You trade do have some knowledge the others don't have. But I think he was pretty reluctant to do it. And I can tell you, he does not have his boot in it. That doesn't look that quickly. Maybe 150, 160 miles an hour. He's well, not moving very fast. He won't put his foot right in it, because he wants to find out how well it is as well. Of course, when we race here in the 24-hour race, us men, and it rains, we have to race here in the rain. Well, your tires are different. The tires on these cars are slicks, and it gets very slippery on slicks when there's a little water out there. The old aquaplaning beginning to take place. Possibly slicks on slicks. Now, there you see Waltrip beginning to get a little speed. At least there's no rooster tail of water behind the thing. No, no it, it's pretty dry already, I think. This is a slippery bit coming off turn four there as the road flattens out, coming into the tri -oval. It's drying out here reasonably well, but it's still a bit damp. If just the sun would come through, it would really dry this place up very quickly, because it is quite warm out there. It's probably 75 degrees, but very humid. Now, Waltrip, believe me, is not getting an advantage. These are what they call rabbit laps, and he will fall back into his natural starting position. He is in communication on radio with his pit boss, Buddy Parrott. And let's go to Ned Jarrett right now. Ken, I'm in the pits with Glenn Wood, who started the very first Daytona 500 as a driver himself. Now he's a car owner for David Pearson. Glenn, you have a slight problem with the windshield on that car number 21. Well, there's a crack straight up it, but uh, I don't think it'll give any problem because there's three braces right there where it is, and, uh, and I don't think it'll be a problem. What would cause it to crack so early at the low speeds they're running now? Well, this is a new car, and sometimes uh, you can't get it fitted exactly, but we ran all week and didn't have a problem, and some windshield are made a little bit different with a little bowl more than the other one or something, and uh, we hadn't run this but two laps, so uh, it just got a little place in it. I don't think it'll bother. Well, you plan to do anything about it? Well, we can put a piece of tape over when we stop the first time. Yes, for sure. Did you give David any particular instructions before he went out as far as strategy is concerned? No, he, he uses his own. We got a radio, though, and we'll take care of that. Okay, that's the story from Glenwood. Back to you, Ken. Waltrip's car is pulled on pit road. He's talking with crew chief Buddy Parrott at the present time. And there's a NASCAR official there, I think, too. Isn't he kneeling down by the car? Yeah, there he Indeed is. Indeed he is. He'll be... They say it's about five laps, but this might change things. That windshield is a bit scary, you know. When you're going around here at 195 mile an hour, there's an awful lot of pressure trying to push that windshield into the car, which is why these NASCAR cars have the bars inside the cab. You can see that on Benny's car, in fact. They say five laps, and they will be under green in the 21st annual Daytona 500, live today on CBS. The sun beginning to play peekaboo with over 100,000 people gathered to watch the running of the Daytona 500. About three and a half more laps and they will be cut loose and sent on their way at top speed. In the control tower you see Bill Gazaway controlling all the ambulances, all the emergency equipment, the fire trucks, and around this track are observer points. And he's in constant contact with those observer points, finding out what the exact conditions are, because we might have it bright and sunny on one end of this two and a half mile track and have it rainy on the other. Let's go to Brock Yates in the Darrell Waltrip pit. Ken, I've got Buddy Parrott with me, Darrell Waltrip's crew chief. You just ran a couple of rather brisk 160 mile an hour laps. What did he find out on those trips? He's talking with Darrell right now. Okay, uh, Darrell was just on the phone to me. Uh, turn two is still slick, and uh, he's wanting to get it cleaned up because it, it could rain. It 
it could wreck a lot of cars and everything. So uh, I know they'll feel sure that NASCAR will do the right thing and uh, dry the racetrack up so we can give a good race for the fans. Pit lane looks a little slick. That might be a little adventurous on the first round of pit stops. That's true. All right. Here we go. Late word. Late word. Okay, there. Okay. Uh, <laughs> We're going to send it back up to you, Ken. We'll keep in touch with Buddy. Well, you can see Buddy Parrott there actually talking to his driver yeah, in car number 88, Waltrip. Having a busy day trying to talk to Brock and Darrell at the same time. Two laps. There's a lot of psyching going on down here. They're trying to prod each other around to get the best possible advantage. But you heard that they, 88 feels that turn two is still a tad slippery. Well, the adrenaline will be starting to flow now because... This is a very, very important race to these men. We've already heard that from Ned Jarrett, who failed to win this one. And there's an awful lot of money at stake this year, over $65,000. To win it. To win it. Pace car coming by, and they're showing two laps, and they're going to turn them loose. 13 laps completed, 32 and a half miles. Baker. Baker, frantically waving at the officials. I think he's trying to wave them off. He was waving his hand out the window, and he certainly wasn't saying hi to anybody. I really think that he was telling them, no, not one lap to go or two laps to go. Let's leave it a bit longer. We have three cars pulling out of pit road. Dick May comes in, Jim Vandiver's car also pitting, and Terry Mock from Florida pitting his automobile here. Maybe topping the tanks or making a final adjustment on the cars. Countdown continues. We are working in the 15th lap. Flagman Chip Warren, caution flag in hand. Now he's shaking his head. Is someone telling him something different? If you're just joining us, it has rained through the night on into the morning and cleared just about an hour before post time. They have tried frantically to drive the track out for a start. We have now run 14 laps officially of the 1979 Daytona 500. We've run them under caution. There you see the pole sitter. Okay, we've just had a word from uh, the control center that Baker says turn two is too slick. And so does Allison as well, Bobby Allison. And I noticed the NASCAR officials are coming back out here to the side of the track, and there will be a few more laps before they turn them loose in this event. Well, now, maybe. They just say it's, we haven't had a word that they're going to give them anymore. Well, I see the two officials are standing beside the track. Jim Warren looking up at the control center to see what is the latest word. He's giving them the signal for one lap to go. Uh -huh. What's We're Buddy Baker going to say to that? They're going to try and turn them loose this time. Well, of course, this is the point, you know, you could look at it and say, well, they're racing drivers, they'll just have to go through turn two a bit slower and, uh, and you know, play according to the rules. It, it's not that wet, it is just a little bit damp. Cuckoo Marlin hitting his automobile back in the control tower. There you see the switch in hand to turn them loose. Lance Childress and Ernie Moore, who had moved out to the side of the track, are the now moving light, back. The pace light cars, is, sorry, the lights on the pace car you see are off, and that tells the drivers also there's only one lap to go. Indicative of a start. 15 laps have been completed, 37 and a half miles. They'll be getting green this time. Can Baker pull it off? Only one driver has ever won the pole position, then the 125-mile qualifying race, and come in and win the 500. Fireball Roberts, can Baker do it? Won the pole with a new record. The 125, he ran almost as an experiment to make sure the car would do all the things they wanted to do under race pressure. And it certainly did that. Buddy Baker's been looking incredibly strong all week. But of course, 500 miles is a long, long way to go at 190 miles an hour. The pressure is really on. Here they come out of turn number four, settling down for a start. The lead cars wanted to wave it off a few more laps. Conditions reported from the observer's tower in turn two. It's okay to race. Let's see what happens. Watch for that switch to turn, and okay, we will be racing. Okay, starter, all yours. Come on, Chip, let him out. There's the word. Light goes green. Then Gazzara drops the green flag, and the field hurdles into turn number one. Critical time. Donnie Allison goes out in front. Baker dropping to second. Second turn. Allison, four car lengths. into the back straight away. Everybody okay. That's what's called a, a multiple car draft. Can you imagine the wind following that long? Dale Yarbrough moving up into second place there, trying to drop back into third. Donnie Allison is in front. Here they come to complete lap one under green, the 16th lap of the race. As they come to the tri-oval, 
The leader is Donnie Allison. Buddy Baker is in second. Kelly Armorough third. Benny Parsons is in fourth. Darrell Waltrip rides in fifth. A.J. Boyd is in sixth. Bobby Allison back there in seventh. Donnie Allison trying to break away from the field. They'll try to run him down. There they are going up on the 31 degree banking of turns one and two. Back straight away. Allison drawing away. There's Parsons. And you can see the windshield already spattered as he flies down the back straightaway. Now here he comes on a slingshot. Who's he about to slingshot there? He pulls up. It looks like Buddy Baker's automobile directly in front of him. Into turn three and four at over 195 miles an hour. You're riding with Benny Parsons out of turn four. It's Allison in front. I wonder if they let me take over one of these pit stops. Donnie Allison pointed as he came by. Boy, this is going to be a controversial one. Baker in second. And look at that Oklahoma land rush back there. Second, third, fourth, all in a kibble. Donnie Allison is doing an incredible job here, pulling away from a multiple car draft, which is almost impossible to do in this racing. If he could just make enough room and really get away, he would be in very, very, very good shape. Rolling back up into turn number three. Donnie Allison maintaining the lead by six car lengths from the Goodyear blimp. There you see the field of the third and fourth turn of the two and a half mile High Bank Daytona Speedway. Here they come for the tri-oval. Directly down below us now, it is Donnie Allison in first. Cale Yarborough in second. Benny Parsons has gone to third. The race vision CBS camera in Benny Parsons' car hauling up to the third spot. Bobby Allison is in fourth. There you see the leader. Allison first, Cale Yarborough in second, Benny Parsons in third. Parsons nearly won this race a second time. He won it back in 75. Donnie Allison looking for his first win in the most prestigious stock car race of them all, which ran its first 16 laps today under caution because of the rain conditions earlier. Cale Yarborough in second. Benny Parsons in third. A dice for positions coming to the tri-oval. Running fourth is Bobby Allison, going fifth, Darrell Waltrip. The sixth position, A.J. Boyd. Seventh, Dave Marcus, dropping to eighth, Buddy Baker. And in ninth is David Pearson. Here's Pearson moving under Buddy Baker to take over in eighth. I can only think that Buddy Baker is just biding his time here. <coughs> Not the sort of thing he's been doing all week. Yarborough closes ground on Allison. Cale Yarborough, twice the winner of the Daytona 500, moves in on Donnie Allison, back straight away. Allison goes to the inside, noses down through, slingshot. Kelly Arborough takes the lead. Turn that four. Inches apart at 190 miles per hour. Yarborough first, Donnie Allison second, number 27, Parsons in third. Back they come. Bobby Allison stays in that fourth position. Here they come, screaming, down to one the time, up into the banking they go. Those first seven cars have pulled out quite a lead. Seven car draft for the lead. There you see them going down the back straightaway. Here's a slingshot. It's Benny Parsons dropping to the inside. They stacked them almost three deep. Benny Parsons at number 27 going for first place. Gets to second as he gets around Donnie Allison. Bobby Allison goes side by side with his brother for third spot. Bobby Allison low, Donnie Allison high at turn four. And Bobby takes away third spot from Donnie. A.J. Foyt now going alongside. Neil Bottom. Neil Bottom in the number two. position. David Pearson is pulling up on this lead group there. Being hotly pursued by Richard Petty, I think. Kelly Yarbrough still in first, Benny Parsons in second, Allison, Donnie, Bobby in third, Allison, Donnie in fourth. Sweeping down the back straightaway. <laughs> Talk about a choo-choo train. Parsons pressing. Goes for the lead. Benny Parsons sweeps into first place. Going to second, dragged along with him as last year's Daytona 500 champion. Bobby Allison, Kelly Yarbrough falling to third, Donnie Allison fourth. Waltrip in the fifth position as they hit turn four. Waltrip in fifth, Dave Marcus in sixth, the red car, A.J. Foyt in seventh, tight running in eighth. David Pearson, Pearson about three car lengths behind, or ten car lengths 
behind. H.J. Voigt's on the front four. Parsons in front. Allison in second. Bobby Allison second. His brother, the younger brother, Donnie Allison in third. We'll be back with more live coverage of the Daytona 500 after this word from your local station. Running right there, holding on to the race vision camera, showing you what it's like out there, folks. He's just catching up on the drive. You can see him inexorably making ground on that lead car there. And there's Buddy Baker, who's fallen all the way back to 19th position, being passed by Terry Labonte in the 44 and the 30 car of, of uh, Ty Scott. Buddy Baker's Daytona look, looks like it's striking again. I mean, he can't be playing it that cool. To be passed by those back markers like that is just not in his game plan at all. He's Jim, back now to about 23rd or 4th spot. Let's see if he pits. Baker is coming. He's staying on. Let's go to Ned Jarrett. And with the green flag drop, Baker was only running on seven cylinders. He continues to drop back in the field. Junior Johnson told us before the green flag drop that the humidity here today could cause a problem with some of these cars, and apparently it has for Buddy Baker. They're hoping for a caution early so that they might could bring him in and maybe even change spark plugs on the car and get it running on eight cylinders again. I saw him waving to his pit crew as he went by that time. He's obviously in pretty serious trouble. What a desperate disappointment to this man who's tried so hard to win this 500 and really had it all locked up. But that's racing, I suppose. Meanwhile, Bonnet has moved from 20th up to 9th position in the race. In lap traffic, leaders pulling up on number 67, Buddy Arrington. Donnie Allison skedaddles Whoa. by a blown engine. I think that's Vandiver's car going south. Jim Vandiver's automobile erupts in smoke. This could bring out, you see him running through the water on the bottom of the track. And he's got to be careful in that water because he's still going about 130 miles an hour. Now let's watch the leaders. If caution were to come out, they would still have to race all the way back to the start finish line. No sign of caution. Vandiver way down on the track. Donnie Allison in first, Bobby Allison running that second position. No, that's Kale, isn't it? That's 11, that's Kale uh, in second position behind Donnie. Bobby Allison in second, Kale Yarborough in third. Here they come with Bobby Allison in second, Kaylee Arborough third, Benny Parsons in fourth. Darrell Waltrip taking fourth off Benny or trying to. And there you see Dave Marcus, the blue car, just behind that front pack, running by his lonesome in the sixth position behind Darrell Waltrip in fifth. Front three, the Allison brothers running first and second out of turn two. Donnie Allison first, Bobby Allison second, Cale Yarborough third, Parsons in the fourth position, and then Waltrip. We really have 11 cars running in this first draft. Uh, it's extending right down to Richard Petty, who's picked up two places and is running in 11th. What would be half a second behind the leader, I suppose. And the misfortune that has badgered Buddy Baker's career at Daytona continuing today, now running on just seven cylinders. Whoa, out of control on the inside and picking the car back up was Waltrip. Car really getting loose for a moment. Try to give you some individual lap times here very shortly as to how fast those cars are running less than a second apart. Donnie Allison started outside of the front row. There's his brother right behind him. Oldsmobile in first and from the Goodyear blimp, there you see the front six automobiles as Marcus has closed up. Goodyear blimp giving us these marvelous pictures. Now that field headed down the back straight away. It's three and one tenth seconds between the first and 13th car, David. Just three seconds from first back to 13th for 29 laps into the race, 72 and a half miles. Vandiver limping on a pit road. Field coming by, struggle for the lead. The Allison brothers are going to go at it. It's Bobby Allison low, Donnie Allison high. Side by side into turn one at over 190 miles an hour. And Cale Yarbrough getting a nice draft from both of them there. Donnie Allison. Oh, oh Donnie, Donnie Allison out of control. He's spinning. He gets hit by his brother. He's all the way around. Cale Yarbrough's on the grass, that wet grass now, incredibly slippery. Donnie and Bobby Allison off the track, spinning, splashing their way Bobby down through. This will bring out a caution flag and Cale Yarborough. Desperately trying to get that par car back on the track now because they just might get stuck in the mud. That might be the simple thing that puts them out of this race. Tagging each other. Caution flag Here is on. They'll race back right to the line. Now. They're racing back to the stripe. As Number these cars come and it will be Waltrip in first. It will be Benny Parsons in second. I think these cars are just stuck in the mud because Cale really didn't hit anybody. 
Well, it's been well, an unbelievable he? start to the Daytona 500. We are in the 31st lap, and let's look at it again, David Haas. I think what happens here is that Kale coming up on his... No. Bobby Allison just tags his brother Donnie. That's all there is to it. He just nuts that left rear fender. And almost put him upside down right there. And Darrell Waltrip, old Jaws, slips through that gap. And Parsons right with him. See, Kale still hasn't touched anybody yet. He just takes to the infield at about 200 miles an hour, a muddy, wet infield. Uh, and in fact, doesn't even get the car sideways. Tremendous car control. Bobby on the left of the picture there, sliding towards the bank, protecting them from going into Lake Lloyd. Donnie spinning around. But nobody touched anybody hard yet, so those cars are really probably in perfectly race-worthy oh. shape. It's just a case of getting them out of the mud. Cale Yarborough getting the bath of the year in car number 11, as you can see him splashing his way down through the apron. Donnie Allison trying to get back out there. Here is another view. The field coming down out of the turn. It looks like Donnie started to come down. Bobby started to move up. And those are the front cars. Look at Donnie's car right off the floor there, pirouetting around on the left front wheel only. And that's right where that disaster took place yesterday. Coming off turn two is definitely the spookiest place on this track. Darryl Waltrip is in the pits. People into the pits now, of course. Waltrip. Now they'll be doing chassis changes. Sorry. Waltrip in car number 88 is in. Ned Jarrett will have a report in Brock Yates from the pits in just a moment from the drivers as to their feelings about the track. Car number one is moving. Donnie Allison is coming around. We are under caution. We are now working the 32nd lap of the race. There's Kale's car back on the track. 168 laps to go. Kale is back out. What a marvelous job of driving by Yarbrough. Wall trip out, but Richard Petty coming out in front of him. Boy, you're talking about an event-filled race. This is it, David. Dave Marcus there going very well. Buddy Baker running on seven cylinders today as hard luck continues to follow him. And Dale Earnhardt, the rookie, is in the hood, is up on his car. In this, the 21st Daytona 500. From the control tower, you're hearing the commands given around the racetrack now. As we're under caution, let's go to that Jared. Ken, everybody is taking advantage of this caution period to come in and change tires. Most of them are changing all four tires. We're standing in the pits of Buddy Baker, who is having a problem, only running on seven cylinders. They raised the hood on the car, but did not do any changes. They were planning to change spark plugs. They are going to bring it back in and see if they can find that problem. Now let's go to Brock Yates. Johnny Allison back in and just the second stop in as many laps, he's gonna have to get this right side. He's had troubles with the right side, now they're gonna make a left side tire change. As you can see, the car is badly dented just in, in front of the left rear fender. He took a hard tag, the whole underside of the car is covered with mud. He's got some real problems. The car does not sound very strong. We wonder how long he can last. Back to you, Ken. I think what's happened here is running through all that water has bothered There's his brother his just in front of him. Bobby Allison, car number 15, coming on the track. Well, they're dead lucky to be there at all because we saw earlier what happened when they had to crash at that same point yesterday, and here they are both just coming in and changing tires as if nothing had happened. So they're both extremely fortunate to be out there in the race. Of course, this is just what Buddy Baker needed, a yellow early on to try and keep the average down while he can get his engine trouble sorted out. Unfortunately for Kale, he's still stuck out there, I think, or they're pushing him around with the truck. Frenzied action in the pits. Kale is just coming into the pit road area now. Kale Yarbrough in the Junior Johnson car. Kale twice a winner here in 1968 and again in 77, pitting car number 11. He has to be frantic. But what a fantastic job he did of driving. He kept the car straight while going across a skating rink with a 600-horsepower car. Absolutely. There's a look of Kale Yarborough. I bet he's not looking like that now. I bet he's absolutely fuming in there because he was nothing to do with that accident, really. Car number 28, Buddy Baker, is also back in, and they have both the hood up and they have the trunk lit up. Here's Ned Jarrett. They're changing spark plugs on the car, Ken. This is something that they thought they'd have to do. Buddy, what happened? I don't know, Ned. It's got something fouled out in the engine that won't run. Okay, that was the word of Buddy Baker, and you can see he's a very disappointed gentleman. Now let's go back to Brock Yates. We're at Bobby Allison's pit. As you can see, the left side of his car is dented as well. They did not make a tire change. They just made a fuel stop. But we all, we'll only have to wait and find out what kind of damage is done underneath uh, after that spin. Up to you. 
at the 34th lap, the car which had started 20th on the field, Neil Bonnet of Hueytown, Alabama, plagued by problems all week, has appropriated first position in these pit stops. Bonnet, number five, is now out in front in the Jim Stacy Harry Hyde, or rather in the Jim Stacy automobile. Here's car number five, Neil Bonnet, a young driver out of Hueytown, Alabama, from the same mold as the Allisons. They, they have brought this kid along. He was the protege of the Allison brothers on the short tracks of Alabama, the Birmingham International Raceway, and those tracks out there. Well, we talk about Buddy Baker's Daytona luck. Poor old Neil Bonnet just hasn't had much luck in racing generally. He keeps joining teams, then disband, and it's good to see him doing so well today. Donnie Allison is back on pit road. Now, there's Benny Parsons' car again. You can see that's the kind of vision a driver has. Windshield wipers at 190 miles an hour are not too effective. They certainly are not too effective. And that's oil from somebody's car and a bit of water. And you can see the sort of problems they have as the race progresses. And it gives you some idea of the kind of pressure these drivers are under. The only pit stop, the only time out the pit stop, such as we're seeing now, other than that, they're on deck all the time. There's no defensive unit, no offensive unit, no taxi squad to put in out here. Bonnet is first. A.J. Foyt, 1972, Daytona 500 champion, has come to second. Remember a year ago, Foyt flipping six, seven times down here in turn number one, side over side. He's back just as tough, just as strong, just as great as ever. Probably the greatest driver of our time in America. Now we're going to see in slow-mo another time what happened. Here they are, turn two. Donnie Allison coming in. Bobby Allison just touches his brother at 190 miles per hour. Donnie's car gets down on the apron, back end kicks up. And they start that wild slide. Yarborough chooses where to go. He had like an eighth of a second, and he went in the only place he could go to escape disaster. Yeah, looking at that tape again, Yarbrough might have just touched the back of Bobby Allison before Allison Bobby touched Allison Donnie. It's... Let's take a look again if we can in a moment. We'd like to see that again uh, in that replay and watch car number 11. Because that's the thing, when you're doing 190 mile an hour around a 31 degree bank turn, it's, it's very, very difficult, not impossible, to keep these cars within inches of each other without touching from time to time. Uh, here it is here again. We see it again. See, Kale's got the advantage of the draft from both of them, and he's pulling up very fast there. It might have even pulled the back end out of car it, number 15. It probably pulled exactly. He got into the draft and just touched the corner there of car 15. Donnie. And, and 15 comes up. Bumper tag at 195 miles an hour. And here you see the results. Luckily. Everybody absolutely fine. Buddy Baker is back in the pit still another time. Working frantically on his automobile down there. What a terrible break for this man who's tried so hard. This race means more to him than any other race. And he's won nearly $70,000 thus far with the pole position, uh, with the 125-mile victory, with the Bush race that we saw yesterday here on CBS. But the race that he wants continues to elude him, and Donnie Allison is in again. Now, I wouldn't be surprised at these cars, because when they took that wild ride across the mud, all that mud and water slid up under the hood there, because it could have wet the electrics, which is not the sort of thing these guys normally have to worry about too much. Donnie Allison's car number one, convalescing here on pit road. As is Buddy Baker. Good work. Poor old Buddy Baker, you know, this is really the main race of the year for these guys. We're still under caution. Bobby Allison won this race a year ago. We had the opportunity to fly to Daytona with him as he prepared for this great racing classic. The defending Daytona champion, Bobby Allison, loves racing and well he should. He's earned over $2 million on the track, but while other drivers use fishing trips and hunting expeditions to get away from the pressures of power and speed, Allison uses his aircraft for all the relaxation he desires. Well, I really enjoy racing and I really enjoy flying and uh, it just seems to go together. The flying allows me to do more racing. Hey, Allison, as a kid, did you want to be a pilot or did you want to be a race driver? Well, really both. Uh, I got real interested in flying when I was uh, 14, 15, 16 years old, but I was also interested in racing. And finally, 
My interest in racing took me away from flying. When you're up here in this twin engine plane, do you think about the old days when you and Judy used to scramble, stiff hitching those cars out of Miami all over the country? I think about a lot of those times when we spent uh, all night the night after a race getting home, uh, all night the night before qualifying getting to the racetrack, and uh, the times when I w really would have loved to have stopped at a motel and I couldn't because we didn't have the money or I couldn't because we didn't have the time, I uh, wouldn't be able to get the car ready for the next race if I took a night off. As we get over Daytona and you prepare to set down, what are your feelings about the Daytona Speedway? Uh, I feel that it uh, uh, can be one of the best tracks and it can be one of the worst tracks. It's a track that's uh, not been my friend for a long, long time and uh, now uh, is kind of one of the uh, places that, uh, that I feel good about. I'd like to come back and win the Daytona 500 again. For many years, Daytona was a very ominous place for you. It didn't hold much luck, and then last year it all turned around. When you come back here this year, is it a friend, or is it just as ominous as it used to be? Well, it definitely is as ominous as it's always been. Uh, it's a place where, uh, you know, disaster can strike uh, in a, just a split second, and you have to be aware of that. You know, I think that you have to really uh, totally Keep in mind that, uh, you know, you're at a big fast speedway and even though uh, now I've had success here, I still have to be as careful and as, as uh, on guard as I've ever been here. Steady and as on guard as ever. Today, victimized by a spin out of turn number two, Bobby Allison, defending champion in the Warner Hodgson car, is two laps down. And on this track, five miles is a long way to make up, David Hobbs. Yep. Well, as I said earlier, he's lucky to be only two laps down. But, of course, it's almost impossible to make up unless uh, tremendous trouble strikes everywhere else. His brother's back in the pits again with Don, the hood up. He is reported as one lap down. He was able to come around and get back in here. I think Kelly Yarborough is also reported as two laps down. Yarborough, twice a champion here, now two laps down. Here's Brock Yates. <laughs> And this Donnie Allison crew is just having a terrific time down here. They, uh, it, they've just been working their tails off for the last four or five laps. It's the toe-in on the right front side. It was damaged in that collision with his brother, and they just can't seem to get it right. Uh, hopefully, they've got, uh, got it so it'll steer correctly now, but uh, we've got some problems down here. Back to you. Donnie Allison now reported his three laps down, and let's look at the standings. Bonnet is first, Boyd is second, Richard Petty is third, Waltrip fourth, Marcus runs in fifth, while in sixth is Ty Scott, seventh is Ricky Rudd, Benny Parsons in eighth, Jeff Bodine in ninth, David Pearson is in tenth. Live coverage of the Daytona 500 now running in its 39th lap, 161 remaining, 97 and a half miles down the control tower. Bill right, Gasaway, NASCAR race director, checking on the back straightaway. If I give him one to go, can everybody get home? All right, let's go. It'd be one lap to go when they get here. Now there's the command, one lap to go, and they will be racing. Let's go to Ned Jarrett. And I'm standing in the pits of Junior Johnson, who has the K.O. Yarborough car out there. What kind of condition is he in now after the spin, Junior? Well, I think he's, you know, in pretty good shape, except maybe when he spun out, he got in the water, and it might have wet the air cleaner down, and it caused it to miss for a little bit. But we're going to run it and see if it'll clear on up. If it will, we're just going to leave it alone. Ken since, Ken, since the dirt track days of NASCAR, I can't remember anyone having to change an air cleaner on a car. But he went through a lot of water over there when he made that spin. Now and, back to you. And a lot of mud. Junior Johnson, the last American hero, hoping to get this one home, but he's two laps down. A lap, and Chip Warren will drop the flag once again. Now Parsons is running in the eighth position we mentioned to you. The top rookie in the race is Jeff Bodine from Bellingham, Mass., in ninth. David Pearson is in 10th, and Bruce Hill is in 11th as we look further back in the field. A lap, and they'll be getting the green once again. It's been a whale of a charge up in front. Tremendous pressure on the leaders. Nobody's able to get away. The average for the race is down about 130 miles an hour because of the 
spins, and because of that very slow start, the first 15, 16 laps being run under caution as they try to dry out the track. Buddy Baker's car is still on pit road as they get ready for green. There's your field coming down the back straightaway, and down on pit road rests Buddy Baker's hopes in car number 28 of being the first man since Fireball Roberts to win all three, the pole, the 125 qualifying race in this one. And it looks like this race is going to restart without Baker. Here they are. Now on the bottom of the track are the lap cars, the slower cars, while the fast cars are all up on the outside. Finger on the switch. When it goes off, they'll turn on. Come on. All yours, Mr. Starter. Green light on. Green flag. And here it comes, a charge to the green flag. Charging down along the bottom of the track, trying to make up about four places, which he successfully did before they crossed the start finish line. It would be some story if Cale Yarborough could come back and make up those laps, but if there's one that can do it, he is the one. There's Neil Bonnet out in front. AJ Foyt tucked in second place. AJ the back straightaway, tight running. Looks like one car from that angle. They're running so close together in the draft, trying to break away from Richard Petty in third. AJ going to the inside. Foyt muscles his way to the bottom. Power on, and he goes into first place. Richard Petty gaining ground on Neil Bonnet here. Right behind the Darrow Waldron. Live, the Daytona 500 on CBS with A.J. Foyt. Neil Bonnet in second, Richard Petty rambling in third. They thunder into turn number one. Waltrip moving the inside. Waltrip working. Darrell Waltrip, the Franklin, Tennessee driver, goes into second place, dropping Foyt to third. Now he falls to fourth. Now he's falling to fifth. And Dale Earnhardt, the rookie, coming up on the inside of him now. Well, I think Dale Earnhardt might be a lap down. That blue and yellow car, number two. Waltrip goes for the lead. And Ty Scott in number 30, the Penn Argyle, Pennsylvania driver, Ty Scott, mixing it up with the Giants out here. I think some of the Giants might be a little bit nervous about that. Whoa, it's close. Just touching bumpers. Pulls out of the draft and right into the front of... Scott. Number five goes back in front. Neil Bonnet back into the lead. Look at those switching and swapping of positions out there, David. The draft in there is tremendous. These cars are being sucked and blown around from all the spots. There's Neil Bonnet, the current leader. It's nice to see him up there because he's had a bad couple of years. In, in that second position, trying to make up a lap is Bobby Allison. Here's Bobby Allison down to the inside as he thrust the Bud Moore car out in front. If a caution could come out here, he would circle the track and make up a lap. Earnhardt. Now there's the kid to watch. This kid Earnhardt in the Australian number two, the car out of California, the driver from North Carolina, second generation driver, his father, one of the most famous short track drivers in American racing history, the, the well-known Ralph Earnhardt. His kid looks good today. Dale's had a fantastic week here, he really has. But I, as I say, I think he's a lap down, but I'm not sure at the moment. Look at those cars kissing that wall as they come into turn one. Bonnet challenged on the inside by Earnhardt. We're checking now to see if Earnhardt is that lap down. Still wheel to wheel and right in the middle of the mix up on the outside is number 30 Ty Scott. Just look at those cars weaving about like that they cause it pulls the cars in front or behind it actually moves them around on the road. Car number five is your leader number two is one lap down and we're waiting for again we just were told he was a lap down now they're rechecking and scoring. <laughs> I'll tell you, he sure runs like a champ today. Look at Bobby Allison's car. They're all beaten up at the front, but still going very, very effectively. Dave Marcus is pitted number 02. Marcus pitting number 02. I can't believe what there's going to be trouble up here in the front. They're so tight, so close, and nobody giving an inch. Nobody giving at all. As you say, they, they can't keep this up for long. It's bound to string out. Covering a city block a second in rush hour traffic. Take a look at that. Dale Earnhardt going to the lead. Three He's wide. Taking Bobby Allison with him. Three wide. Under Ty Scott. Baker back in the pits another time. Earnhardt blazes back into the front of this group. Earnhardt is the leader. Earnhardt reported as the leader. Let's go to Ned Jarrett. Not 
cure the problem they had. Now they're going to other parts of the ignition, hopefully to find the problem. They're about to change to the distributor on the car, but again, they're too far down now to make a comeback and have a chance of winning this race. But Dale Earnhardt does in car number two. Here he is out in front. Here's Bobby Allison drafting with him, trying to make up a lap. Meanwhile, down on the inside, here comes Benny Parsons in number 27, making his own stab to get back in the lead. Benny Parsons has pulled into second spot, dropping Ty Scott into third. Waltrip has moved to fourth. There's Earnhardt, your leader. Out of turn four. Nine cars less than a second apart. Make that about 12. A good baker's dozen. Earnhardt in first. The crumpled car number 15 riding just behind him, still trying to make up a lap. Earnhardt not intimidated, and Buddy Baker is climbing out. What a disappointed man he must be. This is the biggest race of the year on the NASCAR circuit. This is like the Indianapolis of the USAC scene to these men, and what a terrible disappointment it must be to Buddy, who had such a fantastic week right up till just 47 laps ago. 1961, it began for him. His father came here. His dad couldn't win this race. And in 1979, Buddy Baker can't win it either. Poor old Buddy Baker has a reputation as a car breaker. People say he drives very hard. But there's no way you can say he drove that car hard. It all went wrong on a, on a yellow light. Let's go to Ned Jarrett. Buddy, you look like a very disappointed man. I don't believe it. As good as that car run all the week and then today on race day. I don't know. When they dropped the green flag, it was skipping and popping so bad I couldn't even keep up. And it just got worse to where it wouldn't turn but about 6,000 RPM where it had been turning 75. So. Look like I'll be back in next year trying for my first one here. Boy, that's disappointing. Well, you can just see it in his face, Ken, the disappointment that he has. He was so high for this race, thought that it was going to be his first Daytona 500 win after everything had gone so well here. A week leading up to today, but it's not to be. Buddy Baker, a spectator, watching this field, wishing he was part of it at over 190 miles an hour, assaulting the high banks of Daytona. That's racing luck. Benny Parsons out in front. Parsons going to the lead. In second place, Earnhardt. And there's your leader as he's flying down the line straight away from our race vision camera. Tom Spaulding's crew putting together this camera that gives you just some of the feeling that is in racing a car in the lead here at Daytona. He's trying to hold on to the lead. They're beginning to close on him again as he comes into the tri-oval. That mess smeared on the screen gives you some idea of the vision these guys have in these long races. And as the race progresses, that's going to get worse. Like a giant ballet by these 3,700 pound cars inches apart. One miscalculation, one miscue, and you've seen what can happen. Baker seems to be drawing away, and the reason is the second place car, Earnhardt, is running side by side with Allison. And if they run side by side, they slow down. Now on the inside, dropping low. Challenger coming up through. Earnhardt has broken away. They begin to go single file. They can go much faster that way. Back they come through three and four. Earnhardt right in there behind Benny Parsons as you look right in over their fingernails. The Back hood. they come for the tri -oval. Still holding on in third, unbelievably, is Ty Scott. What a run the kid from Penargel, Pennsylvania. Waltrip trying to hold on to fourth in 05. Let's not discount the chances of 05 today. He's beginning to roll. Richard Brooks of Porterville, California. Brooks in a terrible crash at Talladega four years ago. He rolled over 17 times. Here he is running right up there with him today. Looking very strong. That's Brooks now in fourth position. Number 05, the white automobile back and forth. Ty Scott, number 30, just in front of him. Then the blue and yellow car, Earnhardt, and Benny Parsons is out in front as they come by this time to complete the 52nd lap of 30 miles. I think Brooks has pulled up from eighth spot on the starting grid, and this is a new car for him. A new team and a new year. Parsons in front as a seagull lazes over the speedway. Earnhardt lazes in second place. Oh, tag 
on the wall of turn four. Multiple crash coming up. Oh, crikey. We have a crash in turn number four. As you can see, several cars, just as we were coming back out of control in the fourth turn, sliding, slithering into the wall, bouncing into the infield. No one seems upside down. Car number 50 Bruce just Hill. coming to rest. We have some replays of this incident. There is Bruce Hill's car sliding with the 87, the blue car, into the infield. And then behind it, all hell broke loose. From another viewpoint, out of turn four, down off the 31 degree banking, you see them spinning, sliding, trying to ease the cars There's through. There's David, David Pearson, Pearson, number 21 in there too. Pearson's cars crashed in the front, crashed in the rear. We have one car destroyed up in the wall. This is taking place in the 55th lap. A wreck strewn Daytona 500. Well, this is going to bring out a very, very long caution. They're going to have to move these cars, obviously, and then they're going to have to go over this track with a fine tooth comb, pick up all the debris that these cars have left there. Seven cars becoming damaged commodities up here in turn number one. Thirty-five to sixty-five thousand dollar cars out of it here in the Daytona 500, and there is David Pearson's car. He's standing beside the machine, already free of it. That other red car up there is not AJ Foyt's car, is it? No, it is not. That's the uh, car number 50. No, the other red car, the one in the middle of the track, Bruce Hill's automobile. That we... There's one in the middle of the track, a red car, and we can't see the number from here. And I'm just wondering if that's AJ Foyt's car. Bruce Hill out of his automobile. Bruce Hill has climbed away from his car, and there you see the two wrecked automobiles. I waiting for verification on the two cars in the crash. Field coming by, and apparently the drivers are all right. You see the safety crews down there, and they're indicating that they're... I think there's going to be a pretty massive entry into the pits at this stage of the game. David Pearson, former winner will not be a winner today. Chewing his gum, always the silver fox. No matter how bad it is, looks a little relaxed. Ty Scott pitting his car. Most of the leaders now coming on pit road. But the Wood Brothers car, which has won so many times here at Daytona, will not be a winner today. From the very beginning, the Wood Brothers have been so formidable out here in this race. They've won this race with A.J. Foyt, of course. They won it with Kelly Arborough in 1968. They've won it with David. And now you see the safety crews taking away one of the drivers from those wrecked automobiles. Well, there's A.J. Foyt pulling into the pit, so that's not his car that's stuck in the middle of the track. It may be Joe Milliken. Looks to me like it's Joe. It must be Joe Milliken, which is very unfortunate. He was a man I, if I was going to be asked to pick an outsider, it would have been Dale Earnhardt or Joe Milliken, both rookies, and both extremely showed tremendous form this week. Joe Milliken, in fact, is driving Benny Parsons' car from last year, number 72, owned by uh, L.G. DeWitt from... Ellaby, North Carolina. 56 laps have been completed. A bad crash in turn four. We've had one and two, one and four. We'll look at it again in replay as they pick up the debris from these two cars that have socked the wall. I believe it started with 50 and 87 and then behind it, everybody gets into it. David Pearson right in the middle of it sliding toward the infield and almost cuffing another car on the inside of the track. Because this is the thing when you have these fantastic multiple drafts, when anything goes wrong, I mean, everybody is right in it, and there's just no really avoiding it. No way at all. And here is the car number 50 and 87 splashing down to the inside. It happened far up on the banking, and I believe it started with these two automobiles as they come to rest down on the inside of the track. And you can see how wet and muddy it is from all the rain we had last night. Is, does that have any effect? Is that what's creating the problem here? Well, I think we're having an extra special fast race, and uh, the track is green because of the rain last night. So once again, caution is unfurled. The yellow flag is out in our live coverage of the 21st annual Daytona 500.
56 laps complete. We've just had an identification on the two crash cars. Butch Mock was one, Milliken the other. The NBA regional games coming up later today. Washington versus Seattle, Chicago versus Kansas City. That's coming up next today. Consult your local listings for the game and time in your area. Here at the Daytona 500, we are in the 56th lap of the race. We're down 140 miles. You've had a multiple crash, and while we have a moment, let's go to one of the lounges here at the Daytona Speedway with Mary Ann Bunch. I'm in the VIP suite above the start-finish line. With me is Mr. Bill France Sr., the founder of NASCAR. Bill, this is not your usual Daytona 500. Does the rain and the weather that we've had have some effect upon this? Well, it hasn't had any effect on the crowd because uh, most of the tickets were sold. In fact, all of the reserve seat tickets were sold beforehand. And so the only problem that we've had uh, was trying to get the track dried off because it stopped raining along about a quarter of 12. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to get the cars rolling the quarter after. <clears throat> that didn't give us quite time enough. But uh, we, there was one other time that we had to do what we did today. We started under the yellow flag. and. Uh, I think we counted the first 15 laps under the yellow flag, gave them the green flag, and away they've gone. Now we've had, uh, we just had a big pileup, and I don't know, uh, probably will take another five or six laps maybe to clear the track up. But uh, yeah, we've had uh, rough weather yesterday. We had to shorten the event yesterday on account of the bad weather. We had uh, rain this morning, but uh, in no way has our weather here been as bad as it's been up north. Can you tell me, these are the fastest speeds they've been turning here this past week all through the timing and the qualifying. Do you think the combination of the speed plus some of the water possibly on the track is causing the race and the happenings today? No, I don't think so. I think, <clears throat> well, the speed, the cars, the, the thing about it is the cars are all running pretty close to the same speed and there was probably 15 or 18 cars out there running in a pretty much of a bunch. And uh, when cars are running at 180 miles an hour, and there's that many in like a big high-speed traffic jam, uh, you're awfully fortunate if uh, somebody sort of doesn't uh, spin out or something right in the middle of it. And that's what apparently happened. I didn't see the beginning of the accident up there. Uh, I don't think anybody was injured in the accident, but it was a big pileup. From the mentor of NASCAR, back to you, Ken. Thank you, Mary Ann. Here's uh, Darrell Waltrip coming into car number 88. One of the leading contenders to win it. And you see Benny Parsons' car in. And for sure, it looks pretty rough for a lot of the guys yeah, who are what, considered favorites in this race, David. They're lifting the hood, the bonnet, I'd say, on Darrell's car. It sounded rough when he went past last time. Let's go down to Brock Gates in the pits. Ken, now Benny Parsons just made his stop here under yellow and he uh, saw me standing here and he uh, gestured as to how the camera was operating and I gave him a big thumbs up and uh, told him that things were working just fine and gave me back a big smile and he's very pleased that he's contributing to our show as well as to leading this race right now. Interesting point. Benny stopped, as you know, under the caution flag. Everybody, I'm sure, out, uh, who's viewing this race wonders why everybody leaps into the pits as soon as the yellow goes out. Well, obviously, when you come in under a green flag here at Daytona, the cars out on the racetrack are running 190 miles an hour. They're departed. They're running away from you at the matter of a one mile every 20 seconds. So if you spend 20 seconds in the pit, you've already handicapped yourself a mile. So the secret is to come in when everybody's running nice and slow, and you can get the, you get your fuel on board and get underway without losing a lap. That's the secret. That's why everybody's in here. That's why we're here as well. Up to you. Richard Petty is now in the lead with all of these pit stops in the 59th lap. Number 43, Petty is first. Terry Labounty is running in second. He is a rookie running in second spot. And another rookie, Jeff Bodine, is running third. Buddy Baker is back on the track. At this point, he is just running for points for the NASCAR championship this year. He's well out of the hunt. We've had a report that that shunt up in turn number four began when Gary Ballou, another rookie, got up into the wall and started to spin. And the car number 87, you saw the results. He came bounding down in front of car number 50. And from there on, it was a wholesale holocaust for some six or seven automobiles. All drivers are reported as all right. All the drivers are OK. But the former winner of this event, David Pearson, is out of the race. A terrible break for a man who's tried so hard to win on so many occasions. We talked to him with him earlier. 
The Silver Fox lives less than three miles from where he was born, but it's a lifestyle removed from the beginnings for the mill worker's son from Whitney's Mills. Along with a new house, airport attached, a new five-acre lake, David Pearson has perhaps the most unusual trophy room in sport. Hey, David. Good to see you. <laughs> What a beautiful place. Thank you. And you got a country store in the bargain, too. Oh, yeah. What are you keeping? A little bit of everything. Well, let's take a look at it. Okay. Gosh, it's not the easiest place to find you. No. I kind of wish you would wait a little bit longer before you come and give me time to get the place fixed up. A couple of months, anyway. Thank you. You said this is a general store, not a hardware store. How many trophies have you got in here? I don't really know. Uh, and I guess there's no telling anything here, but this is probably uh, three quarters of them. Right? Three quarters of them. I probably got about a third, this many more. David, does any one of these trophies mean more to you than another? I would probably say the very first one I got, which was the uh, World 600, as far as stock car goes. But uh, I've got one somewhere that uh, really was the first one I've ever got, which is just a little car that sits on top of a trophy. Yeah. And uh, that was a sportsman's. When you stand in here among all these symbols of victories, how do you feel? You know, I haven't really thought about it that way when, since you said that, but uh, I enjoy coming in and looking at the trophies, and uh, it reminds you back of some of the early trophies. It reminds you back of, you know, old times or when I first started. So, uh... David Pearson is out of this race, and here's one of the men he's raced with all those years, Richard Petty, now having an opportunity to lead the event question is, can Petty stay there? It's been a long, lean streak for Richard Petty, who's won 185 races in his career, but has gone more than a season without a victory. He's changed everything. He's changed cars. He's changed engines, suspension set up all week. Here's Ned Jarrett in the pits with, Ned, with uh, David Pearson. David, what happened? It was a bunch of cars started spinning, so uh, I don't know which one triggered it off and got it started. Looked like your car was torn up pretty badly. It was. I got hit uh, a couple of times, but as uh, far as who hit me, I don't even know. You were running a pretty good clip when that happened. I was running good. In fact, uh, I was more or less just taking it easy and trying to fill the things out because I felt like the track was still a little bit wet, and uh, especially after Don and Bobby got together up there. But uh, I was just more or less, you know, like I say, just taking it easy and seeing, uh, filling things out and maybe start running the other way. But uh, I was real happy with the car. I was running good. David, you look so cool and relaxed after having gone through an accident of that sort. Well, I don't need to cry about it. You know, it's done over with. But uh, I just hate it, you know, on account of the Leonard and Glenn and Pure Letter because uh, the car, it was a new car and it's tore up pretty bad. So I just hope that we can get it back uh, running and handling as good as it was. Ken, he's disappointed, but he's taking it in stride. That's the mark of a true champion. And one of the greatest champions in American stock car racing, David Pearson. The winner of this event in 1976 will not grace victory lane today, David Hobbs. It would have been interesting to put a cardiograph on him and see what his heart rate's gone to. Probably hasn't altered at all. Uh, he looked pretty cool and calm, considering he just bounced off the wall and a couple of other cars. At close to 200 miles a gallon. There's poor old Darrell Waltrip coming into the pits again. Frenzied activity on Waltrip's pits. Car number 88 has been in and out several times, and we noted earlier that the engine was beginning to gargle a little on car number 88. Let's go to Brock Gates. Okay, we're over here at the Darrell Walter pit. Darrell, what's the problem? Oh, we run so long on the darn caution flag. It's fouled out all the spark plugs. Everybody's having the same trouble. <laughs> Is it a question of the racetrack being too slick or uh, just a lot of crashes? What's the problem? Too many cautions. We fouled all the plugs under the cautions. A very, very displeased young man in this race car. He's, uh, he, he's having trouble. His crew chief and uh, engine man Robert Yates are changing plugs in his car. And it's obviously very fortunate that they're in here under a yellow or they would be totally out of contention. Up to you, Ken. 62 laps are down, 155 miles, and the cautions have really counted here and amounted. There is David Pearson's car. And as they count and them out, it's going to change the whole complexion of this race for some of those leaders. You heard what Waltrip said. It's beginning to have some ramifications in the engine department. We're watching 05 come in. One more lap, and they will be racing. Richard Brooks is coming back on the track, officially out of the race now. Hill, Pearson, Gary Ballou, Butch Mock, Joe Milliken, they are officially retired from the event. 
be one of the cars catching up one lap and they will be running. And here's the situation up in front. Richard Petty, number 43, is leading. Terry Labounty, a young Texan, is driving in second place. Jeff Bodine is in third. Ricky Rudd is in fourth. Dale Earnhardt lies in fifth. Grant Adcox is in sixth. Neil Bonnet being shown in seventh at the present time. On the pit stops, has moved some cars back. They're getting set for a start once again here at the Daytona International Speedway. When they come around, they'll be working in the 65th lap as they take the green. They are working the 64th at the present moment. There you see them lining up to get this race restarted. Darrell Waltrip is just going beneath us, and there you see the shot from Benny Parsons' car, and he has a lot of traffic to clear. Parsons is way back from the leaders now with these pit stops and he will just come out blitzing to get up with those leaders. There's Donnie Allison trying to scrape along the front there. <laughs> Darrell Walchett managed to get in and out of the pits there without losing another lap, so he's rushing around behind this field now to try and catch up so that he's still on the same lap. Great shots today from that old Goodyear blimp floating up here over the speedway and some 100,000 racing enthusiasts on a gray day here at the Daytona Speedway for the 21st Daytona 500. Live today on CBS, with David Hobbs, Brock Yates, Ned Jarrett, Mary Bunch, I'm Ken Squire. We are ready for a green flag. The cautions, boy, we've had a few. All those cars you see in the lower lane there, there's two lanes of traffic, or well, there's supposed to be two lanes of traffic. They're all the people that are at least one lap down. And so the right hand lane to them, left all hand right, to you on that picture. Let them have it. I the got fast the green lane. light on. Green light is on, yellow light comes off. Parsons trying to fight his way up. One car touches the wall in the start. You can see him grinding along the wall for just a moment. That was car number 90. Ricky Rudd just gracing the wall for a second, and now he's back and rolling. But that will change the aerodynamics on that car some. Now, Donnie Allison scoots out in front. He's trying to make up some time. Another caution here would run him around and have him make up a lap. These more experienced drivers, like the Allison brothers, of course, can, can work the yellow flags to their advantage and actually gain a lap under the caution if they get it just right and if the pace car comes out in the right place. Now it's going to get scary. I tell you, with so many rookies mixed among the masters, so many of the top cars have fallen by the wayside in the early going, it could get really rough from here on. Richard Petty in front, trying to win this race for the sixth time. A lap car directly in front of him, Donnie Allison, in the trial. Well, of course, over the winter, this track here has been totally resurfaced, which is one of the reasons why the speeds are up so much this year. But it also makes it, if you can call racing 190 easy, it does make it a little bit easier, which is why you've got some inexperienced people mixing it there. And I also think it's a contributory cause to some of the incredible accidents that we've been having here this week. People are just trying too hard. And the other thing now is that the track is completely green. It was washed all night with a steady rain. Some of the rubber they had worked into the asphalt has gone away. There you see Petty in first, Earnhardt running in the second position with car number two, and Labounty number 44 in third. Dale Earnhardt number two has had some pretty in the race in the Sportsman Series and drove a fantastic race here yesterday, unfortunately having a blown tire, tire right near the end and let it rain and he was not classified, but he's been driving very well. He's very experienced, really, although a rookie in Grand National race. There you see Neil Bonnet moving to the inside. Bonnet, number five, trying to pick up a car, Labounty's car. And here goes number two, Earnhardt, working on Richard Petty for the lead. Then he drops back in, snuggles right up on the rear bumper down the back straightaway. Richard Petty here in the Daytona 500 trying to bring it off. Here is Petty in first. Earnhardt is in second. Young Dale Earnhardt pitching his wagon to the star of Richard Petty as he tries to win the Daytona 500. Rookie Dale Earnhardt just sliding underneath Richard Petty, dragging Donnie Allison a couple of laps down with him. Car number 50, Bruce Hill, has re-entered the race. He was officially out, took it back to the garage area, looked at it, and decided to give it. Here's Parsons trying to move under the bounty. They're side by side. Parsons blasting down into turn number one. And here comes Labounty right back beside him. They're side by side for fifth position. Now down the inside goes Benny Parsons under. Car number five, he moves into fourth. 
and there's Richard Petty right in front of him. Inches apart on the outside of Benny Parsons is car number five, Neil Bonnet. And here you see them looking in from the outside now. What a picture. Neil Bonnet's car number five hugging the inside. He's on the move. He goes into second, drops Earnhardt to third. Here's Benny Parsons moving to fourth. Labonte dropping to fifth. Let's go to Ned Jarrett in the pits. Ken, I'm standing by with Rod Oster, who's going to hold the car that Dale Earnhardt is driving. Rod, did you really expect this rookie to be up there fighting with those veterans in the Daytona 500 this early? We sure did. Why? Oh, he's a very gutsy guy. He's very dedicated. And uh, he's got the little natural instinct that you know about, Ned. He looks like a professional out there. Well, right now I think he feels like one, too. Well, he's doing a fine job. Did you give him any special instructions that he's doing it on his own? I think it's pretty much a team effort right now. Okay, that's the word from Rod Osterlund, the owner of that car number two. They're very proud of the job Dale Earnhardt's doing here now. Back to you, Ken. And there you see him at second place with Neil Bonnet out in front. What a pack. Nobody is getting any edge. No room for error. No room for the pressure to come off. Well, I make it. There's about three and a half seconds covering the first 24 cars here. And that is some pack. Three seconds covering the first 24 cars before we have a significant gap in the field. And Donnie Allison is just one lap down in car number one. He's trying with a broken car. It's been torn up. You could see the rent in the side of it to get back in that lead lap. Look at him go. Number one, Allison, trying to make up that lap. If he could just get in front, then if there was an incident, he could circle around the track, and he would be right back with the Hunters for victory lane here at Daytona. Parsons goes down the inside in number 27. There you see him. He's moving right in beside number two, Earnhardt for second position. Back we go to the lead automobiles coming out of turn number four. Look at this jam session for the lead. This is simply incredible automobile racing. No margin for error and no speed limit. Well, this is all a result of the resurfacing here. It has made it just a little bit easier, and as you can see, they're absolutely all hanging in there. Car number 27, drafting off car number one. Benny Parsons is in the lead. He is drafting behind. And car number one, which is one lap down. See them seesaw back and forth at over 190 miles an hour. Down the back straightaway. Number two, Earnhardt going to second place, getting beneath Neil Bonnet. Back in turns three and four, working lap number. Oh, crash at turn four. Neil Bonnet. Neil Bonnet. Spinning. Harry Gant out of control in number 12. Him. My goodness, the absolute worst circumstance that can happen in NASCAR. He hit the end of that pit wall there and threw him back into the track, and he was just missed by everybody. Harry Gant in the Kenny Childers car number 12, destroyed. Gant trying to get out of the car. I think Neil Bonnet may have had a blown tire because just as the last picture went out of frame, I noticed him very, very high on the track. We have the replay from the Goodyear blimp shot. Now watch what happens here. There's number five breaking away. It could have been a tire down. And look at that field. Just touching each other, nudging bumpers. And watch that car number 12, the black automobile of rookie Harry Gant, former national modified champion. Out of control at 180 miles an hour, headed for the wall. Slams into the wall and rockets 300 feet into traffic back across the track, just missed by one car, just missed by another automobile, and slamming into the concrete retainer on the outside. I've never seen a race like this. What an incredible lucky man Harry Gant was there. And listen to this. Donnie Allison in car number one. When the caution came out, rushed around, and Donnie Allison, they say, has made up his lap. So Allison will be right back in the hunt trying to win this Daytona 500. Some dumb pulls right out there. Bill Gasaway. That's what those Kim drivers and... talk to. Come on, 28, slip out there. I got the number one car coming behind you. Don't he go? Stand by a minute, Red. Let me get to get him by you here. I'm going to need you to help clean up something back here, too. There's Neil Bonnet's automobile. Let's go to Brock Yates. I was, I am at Neil Bonnet's pit. The car came in here. It is a rolling wreck. Three of the four tires were flat. They were changed. The hood was uh, kinked. The trunk lid was up. 
The automobile is just uh, narrowed up and bent on all corners, and I wouldn't be surprised if he's back in here and another lap for more work. Up to you, Ken. There's Richard Petty out in front, but the story right now is the resurgent Donnie Allison. He's never won this race. And here you see Bobby Allison's car looking even more sullen, more bruised and abused than it did earlier, coming back on pit road number 15, the Warner Hodgson car. Defending Daytona 500 champion Allison is in. Let's take another look at that crash, David Hobbs. There we see Bonnet just coming down from high up. And he was hit by Labounty at number 44. Who is Terry Labounty, the rookie? And there is Gant. Terry Labounty handled that very, very well to touch that car, moving along as they were at about 175 miles an hour, and not lose his cool and control was pretty impressive, especially for a rookie. Well, Gant's efforts today end in the fourth turn. Savage crash. He is reported as okay. Harry Gant, also a rookie, who's been having quite a good week this week. In slow motion, watch the 44, the red and white car on the inside. The number five looked like it might have cut a tire just, down and came in front of him. He just rolls around the front of Labounty's car and it never even phases him. And look, Harry Gant comes down through the entire pack there. What an unbelievable sight. <laughs> That hurts. You just wouldn't believe that was possible to be missed by so many cars in such a short time. Gant, he took Whew. the full brunt of that in the driver's door and he is all right. Never that has. Really, really speaks well for the safety of these cars. Neil Bonnet's car five is back in, more work on it. Never has one man had so much to so many. We'll be back with more live coverage of the Daytona 500 after this word from your local stations. The driver of the J.W. Hunt, Kenny Childers, car number 12 that you saw take that terrible sock into the wall is standing by with Ned Jarrett. Harry, what happened as you came off of that turn? Well, the car is in front of uh, Richard and uh, Allison spun. I don't really know who it was. Somebody spun, they went down and we backed off. They backed off, then he come back up kind of in front of them and they blocked it down more and I was right behind Allison, tipped him in the back end. And whenever I touched him, my car started fishtailing in, and I think somebody clipped me in the back, then I got me going around. And then you went into the wall, sort of a sudden stop. Yeah. <laughs> what does it feel like to run into a wall at about 190 miles an hour? It seemed like you're doing 200 right there at the last minute. It got faster when it hit that grass. Well, here's Harry Gant, one of the top rookie contenders for the 1979 season. He's not really a rookie in racing because he's had a lot of accomplishments on the short tracks in sportsman competition around the country. This is his first full year of competition in the Grand National Division, and his uh, efforts here today were not what he expected, Ken. They sure weren't. But right now, how about this? The rookie winner of 56 races in the modified ranks of NASCAR a year ago from Bellingham, Massachusetts, Jeff Bodine. His dad, the owner of the Chemung Speedway for years up in New York, has car number 47 out in front. We have a rookie leading this race. I don't think a rookie's ever won the Daytona 500. Pete Hamilton won it in 1970, but I believe he'd had some Grand National experience the year before. Indeed, he had in uh, 1969. But here is a rookie. And this kid in Modifieds has been having phenomenal success for two or three years. He has the patience and the prudence to be a Grand National driver. He is out in front. And there's a black flag, they say, on car number 50, a consultation flag going out for car number 50. That's Bruce Hill of Topeka, Kansas car being told to come in for consultation. That's not a disqualification. That's that the inspectors want to have a little chat with him about one thing or another. Well, it's a thing a... they do because the car's already slammed into the wall once and it's half all falling apart. So I expect they're just checking out that it is really fit to race. Take a look at these standings. Rookie Jeff Bodine from New England is in front. Benny Parsons, the ex Detroit taxi cab driver, running in second. Ty Scott, the Pennsylvania driver, in third. A.J. Foyt, positioned back in fourth. Richard Petty in fifth. And this start is going to be just as rough, just as close and tight is everything we've seen be before. It's going to be frenzied activity all day today. Of course, the positions in these NASCAR races, they change all the time. We've had, I don't know how many le lap leaders so far, but of course, the only lap that it really counts on is lap 200. Mary Ann Bunch is standing by with the honorary starter for today's Daytona 500. I'm with Ben Gazzara. Ben, is this your first race, and what's your opinion so far? 
Well, it, it's the most exciting thing I've ever seen. It is my first race. I came down here because Richard Petty, uh, Cale Yarborough, uh, Darrell, and, uh, and uh, Bobby Ellison have become uh, honorary chairman of a foundation that I'm, I'm the national chairman of, and that's retinitis pigmentosa. They did that because a friend of theirs has it, you know. It's a, it's a ge genetic disease that blinds young children and young adults usually. And we're going to see if we can lick it. We've started a foundation eight years ago, and they're doing terrific research. These men are involved in seeing and sight, and that's part of racing, and it's back to you, Ken. Indeed they are. And the guys like Petty and Yarborough are, are, the, are the kind of people who actually work on things like that. Here is car number 47, Bruce Hill, the leader. And there you see Benny Parsons in second place. Parsons is running in the second spot. Ty Scott running third. Jeff Bodine's the leader. There you see Benny Parsons looking at the leader. Hmm. Race's eye view. Huh. Benny and Parsons, of course, could be a sleeper in this race. He's been complaining all week that he's been a bit off the pace, but he's uh, not showing signs of that at the moment, sitting right there behind the leader, Jeff Bodine. One lap, and they'll begin fidgeting with the lead once again here at Daytona. It'll be lap number 80 when they come by this time. Lap number 81, the green will be unfurled. I'll tell you this, it must be an honor of our first time here for Fly to Fly Cover, having the slowest race in Daytona history yeah, I today. I was just going to say, there's certainly not going to be a record race for all the new speeds. Uh, this is, must be the slowest race they've ever had just about, one way or another. Race vision camera in car number 27, Parsons in second place. There it is, looking for the leader. Jeff Bodine, who moved out of the modified ranks. He drove for a man named Dick Armstrong with a Massachusetts car for the past three or four years, had fantastic success, and elected this year to give it a shot. And Armstrong, who wasn't ready to move into Grand National, didn't want to, ran full page ads a couple of weeks ago congratulating this kid Bodine and wishing him well for the season. There was a lot of feeling in the modified ranks that they might have left not on the best of relationship. Not true at all. Well, of course, with 54 wins, it's difficult to envisage him as being an actual rookie, but uh, he's not used to racing on these super speedways, of oh, course. All that's those, the thing. All those wins came on the half miles and the third miles of America. So all this drafting is new to him. The ultra-high speed is new to him. And, of course, this mass of cars all moving at around about 200 miles an hour is also new to him. And we should point out that he's had trouble twice out here in the past week. He has spun out twice at over 180 miles an hour. But he hasn't been in any any of the walls. The car is running well, and here he is up in front, ready to mix it up with the Masters as we get down for a restart. When they come by, they will have completed 202 and a half miles. The field bunches up once again. It has been the most wreck wreck Daytona 500 I can recall. Here's Bruce Hill up in number 50 on pit road for consultation. There you see the leader. Here is Benny Parsons right in behind him as they come down off the banking headed into the tri-oval area, that race vision camera in Benny Parsons' automobile. He may be able to get a shot just on the start. Jeff Bodine rolls out in front, green is on. Bodine in the lead, Benny Parsons in second. Here they come for turn one. Brooks right behind Benny Parsons. There you see Benny Parsons going for the lead. He closes on Jeff Bodine. He pulls to the inside. Bodine is in front of the back straightaway. Here comes Benny Parsons into first place. You were with him as he takes the lead again. Right with him comes Porterville, California's Richard Brooks into second place. Incorrect. Brooks has shown one lap down. I was in error. Brooks just trying to make up a lap. I don't know where Dick Brooks lost that lap, because he was on the lap, he must have had a wrong pit stop somewhere. Still showing Bodine in second, Ty Scott running in third. There's Richard Brooks sandwiched right in between the first and second place car. Bobby Allison still hanging in here today. We'll give you a capsule version of what's happened so far. With all the action we've seen, it shouldn't take more than 20 minutes. <laughs> it's been an incredible race. Back straight away. Now, uh, here's Richard Brooks down to the inside of 05. Being shown as a lap down, and he's getting beneath Benny Parsons. There, you saw it. Benny, Benny in the cockpit. And then Benny drops back in behind him to pick up that draft. What pictures. Next, back Benny. they come. Parsons going again. 
Bodine leans on Bobby Allison. He tagged his fender in the tri-oval. Bobby Allison is getting punched and hit on either side of his car at race speed. Bobby Allison has led a charmed life today because in the accident a few minutes ago with Harry Gant, I noticed as Gant crossed over that he did in fact tag Allison and pushed Allison into Petty and he just carried straight on, but he's been tagged three times today. But the resurgent Allison is still out here, still trying to make ground. We have a car slowing out of turn number two. One car running very, very slowly down the back straightaway as the field hurdles by. That car is Lenny Pond. 54, Lenny Pond. Number 54. Pond out of it. Leaders coming back for the try over to the start finish line. Benny Parsons, Detroit, Michigan, and Illinois, North Carolina in the lead. Parsons back to the stripe. Right there with him is car number 47. It's Jeff Bodine, the rookie. The New England kid is staying right. With him. Down two turns, one and two at race speed. Parsons pulls away by four car lengths. What more can happen out here today? Here's Bodine after Parsons down the back straightaway. Bodine going for the lead. Bodine goes in front. And can you believe Kale Yarborough's trying to make up a lap? Remember, Kale Yarborough was in that three-car push-off turn number two earlier. He's trying to make up a lap. You see them come back like that through that speed shot. You get some kind of feeling as you fly through the windshield of what it's all about. Hale Yarbrough's going very well there, out of the draft. He's down low and he's managing to hang on to those leaders. He must have found some of that Junior Johnson power. Here are the standings, you see them there. It's Bodine in front, the second place car directly behind is Benny Parsons, then in third is number 30, Ty Scott, running fourth overall in the field, running in the fourth position. Car number 51, A.J. Foyt. There's the race vision shot of the leader, down he goes, plunging into turn number three, up on the 31 degree banking. Back for the tri-oval, just barely out in front, Benny Parsons. He's managing to keep that car pretty low down through turn three and four, which is an important part of race strategy here. If you can run low, you can run fast. Rock Yates standing by. Another one of the drivers that did not make it today. We're in the Lenny Pond pit. Lenny, what's the problem? Engine problem? Lenny's not talking right now. He's had a lot of problems, a lot of stops. As you can see, his crew is just uh, hovering over that engine. It looks like they're trying to change the wedge on the right front side. The car has not been handling it. Uh, it's not as dented as some of them out here, Ken. That's amazing, but uh, he's pressing on. Back to you. Donnie Allison now seventh. He's made up the lap. And Donnie Allison, there you see him in the back of that hunt for the first position. Donnie Allison is back in it on the point. Benny Parsons. I have never seen him hang together like that, ever. The pressure, the anxiety, there's just no margin for error whatsoever out here today. Oh, you can't get away. We've seen that demonstrated three or four times this week. There is no margin for error, and the tremendous responsibility is put on all these drivers. Back straight away, they continue to swap them around. Here's Kaylee Yarborough trying again to get a lap back as Benny Parsons continues to lead the 21st annual Daytona 500. With David Hobbs at the start finish line of the Daytona Speedway, we're watching perhaps the most incredible race we've ever seen. Benny Parsons, you see him here out in front. Kelly Arborough behind him trying to make up a lap. He went a lap down. Actually, in second is Jeff Bodine. Ty Scott running third. Richard Petty is into fourth. Dale Earnhardt running himself up into the fifth position. They're coming for the tri oval to complete the 91st lap this time, 227 miles nearing the halfway point. We have 16 cars running less than three seconds apart. 16 cars, three seconds apart. Back to the pit area with Ned Jarrett. We are standing by with Neil Bonnet, who just had to park his car. Neil, what finally went wrong? Well, Ned, I got up real high up in turn four and got up and loose stuff, and the car started around, you know, I've come bouncing through the infield, come across that road, and I think it pretty well tore the chassis out of my other car. I tried to go back, and when I did, uh, got a big vibration of the car. I don't know what it is. Neil, you were running up front. Did the car surprise you today? Yeah, there's no doubt about it, Ned. You know, we'd had a lot of trouble all week, and turned out if I worked real hard today, the weather as strong as the draft is, I could keep up with the guys, and 
about the time I get to having a lot of fun with the car, you know, I get headed wrong direction. Now that's a story from Neil Bobby. You haven't seen any pit stops under green because there's been so many cautions here in the race, but they're tying the pit stops as well from the time they come onto pit road to the time they leave and to keep keeping accumulated times. Parsons has made three pit stops in the race, total time on pit road, two minutes, 25, and seven one one hundredths of a second. The Ty Scott car, amazingly, is doing very well on pit road. Three pit stops, two minutes, 35 and 73 one hundredths of a second. And A.J. Foyt has been the fastest on pit road from the time he entered to the time he left on three occasions, two minutes, 21 and 88 one hundred seconds. Well, there we see the two leaders. Well, we see the leader, Benny Parsons, being followed by Cale Yarbrough, but they're doing the classic drafting thing. A two-car draft, and Benny Parsons is taking Cale Yarbrough away from his opposition, and can he pull him around a whole lap? Just look at them, the two-car, perfect draft, pulling away from the rest of the field. Remember, Yarbrough is a lap down, or two laps down, car number 11, Cale Yarbrough, in car number 11, when he was in the three-car slide for life off turn number two today with Donnie and Bobby Allison. And there's Donnie Allison and Bobby Allison, and Bobby Allison is making up time. He has come from way back, a lap down. He is back and currently is running up in the top five. His car, badly torn up on the left side, the driver's side, it's still out here going well. He's right behind Dale Earnhardt for fourth place. Yellow car, Earnhardt is in fourth, and here comes Donnie Allison trying to move in there. Back with the leader. There you see Benny Parsons, and here you see second, third, fourth, fifth, back to tenth, all in a bundle as they move to the trioval and back up to turn one. Benny Parsons and Cal Yarbrough have got the NASCAR driver's dream come true. A perfect two-car draft is pulling away from the field. This is helping Benny, who's leading, and of course it just could bring Cale around that one more time that matters. Here comes Donnie Allison for second position. Donnie Allison in the Haas Ellington prepared automobile is going to second with his brother Bobby Allison tagging along. And right behind him comes the venerable A.J. Foyt in car number 51. A.J. begins to get in there now. He has waited it out. He's shown a lot of patience. He's beginning to make his move to get to the halfway point. Now these people will be getting a bit desperate about Benny pulling away so much. And if they would just settle down into a single file draft, they would probably go faster. But of course, that's like uh, trying to ask the impossible. If you are new to motorsports, two cars running as these two cars are. There you see the leader, the car of number 27, Benny Parsons, from our live race vision camera. And now the Goodyear blimp, headed into the banking, dragging Cale Yarborough in his wake. That magical, mystical, invisible wake. And like off the motorboat, that car in second place gets a good drag, and he runs at about half throttle as Bobby Allison in the white number 15 is doing off his brother, Donnie Allison, in the maroon car number one. Leader, Benny Parsons, with the left car. Of course, the principle of the draft is pretty simple, really, and that is that the front car punches a hole in the air, which follows it around, and the second car runs in that hole. There you see it, battle for second place. Donnie Allison now in second. A.J. Foyt, number 51, is in third. Earnhardt, number two, is in fourth. The Allison brothers, the Alabama gang, back together again as Donnie and Bobby try to hitch up in their own two-car draft and run down the leader, Benny Parsons. Here's Benny Parsons. Cale Yarborough, one lap behind, stays with him. More and more, A.J. Foyt begins to look formidable as we move to the halfway point in the race. And one thing one can't forget, there's Benny Parsons' car out in front, whipping down the back straightaway. There is Allison in second place, number one, his brother a lap down, number 15, last year's champion. Darrell Walter back in 11th in car number 88. Third spot is Foyt right here, then fourth spot, number two, Earnhardt, and fifth is Richard Petty. Ned Jarrett. Ken, a week ago, this young man was behind the wheel. He pulled in his first race ever. He's working in the pits of his dad's car here today, Richard Petty. Kyle, how are things going for your dad out there? 
They're going all right now. They're going all right right now. We're having, we've been changing tires and uh, we're a little behind on the tires, so we've got to get them ready here. He's not going quite as good as you did last Sunday, though. Well, uh, race was a little shorter last Sunday than it is this Sunday. We might, we'll probably be strong at the end. Well, that's Kyle Petty. He's looking after the tires here for his dad. What is? What a story there, Richard Petty being passed by Dave Marcus in the 0-2. No, Petty fights him off. That 18-year-old youngster you just heard talking, the first race he ever drove a week ago on this track. And in the great tradition of the Petties, he came home a winner. That was unbelievable. Lee Petty won the first Daytona 500. Richards won it five times. And Kyle Petty at 18, the first race he ever drove, wins on the Daytona Speedway. Benny Parsons continues out in front, going for his second 500 victory. Halfway this time around, it will be halfway in the race. And one of the basic axioms of motorsport is, if Richard Petty is in the top five at the halfway point, you better pack up the tools and go home if you're a competitor, because from there on in, he's been a champion so many times. He is running fifth right now. Here they come for halfway. Chip Warren. Cross flags, halfway in the event. Slowest, first 250 miles in the history of the Daytona 500. But you have seen some of the most incredible, unbelievable action that we've ever witnessed in a motor race here at Daytona. Well, these two are driving a race very reminiscent of Buddy Baker and Darrell Waltrip, who last week in the Bush Dash ran away from the rest of the field, hooked up just like these are. Richard Petty. Richard Petty obviously is running very strongly at this stage, the halfway stage. There's these two to consider, there's Donnie Allison to consider, and of course A.J. Foyt sitting there in third spot. Hasn't really made any serious moves yet, but there's a man to watch. Probably the most formidable racing driver of all time. 47, Jeff Bodine running back in seventh, slowing down, having trouble. Jeff Bodine, not a big strap a small driver, but his talents are in verse order to his physical size. He's having trouble now with his car. He's coming in. Meanwhile, here you see Donnie Allison and his brother trying to keep those cars single file because they can go so much quicker than when they run side by side. There are the halfway standings. Parsons in first. Donnie Allison in second. A.J. Boyd in third. Dale Earnhardt, the rookie, stays in fourth. And now, Cale Yarborough goes by Parsons, and I would presume that Parsons might be letting him go. He'll have to let him do that. There we see the picture from inside the car. Now we're in the blimp. Um, the thing is, you can't just follow these guys forever because the engine gets too hot. So now Benny's very happy to just let uh, Kale lead them around. Obviously, fairly evenly matched cars, these. It keeps Kale's engine cool. Yes, that's the big problem, running the draft. Second place on the field, the gauges just get red and rosy out there, and you have to watch them all the time, watching the bumper of the car in front of you because you can blow an engine so easily in a situation like this. Here they are, two cars running the front. trying to win his second Daytona 500. The 1979 Daytona 500 is sponsored by Goodyear, the makers of Tiempo radios, the tire that eliminates the winter tire changeover. Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, brewers of Budweiser, Bush, Natural, Michelob, and Michelob Light beers. And by the Champion Spark Plug Company, the Spark Plug Specialist. We've had a rash of yellow fever here today. Caution flag number five is out for this car from Bluff City, Tennessee, watching a replay. Johnny Utzman, hand grenades the engine. It detonates right at the start-finish line. Fifth caution of the afternoon as the hopes of Johnny Utzman go up in smoke. The car going down at a turn number one, bringing out the fifth caution of the day. And picture this, we're better than halfway in the race, and 19 cars are running in the lead lap. This, I'm afraid, is going to be a long caution. There's a tremendous streak of oil all the way through the triangle, all the way down the straight, and into turn one. And they're going to have to clean all that up. And, and how about this? When that caution came out, Cale Yarborough leading Parsons came around the track first, and he is making up a lap. Question. Does that put Yarborough back in the lead lap? No, he was three laps down. He has made up a full lap. Cale Yarborough has now made up a full lap. 
And there is now word that Benny Parsons, the leader car, is showing some smoke. Meanwhile, this story is developing in the pits with Brock Yates. Here comes our leader into the pits. David F., the crew chief, ready. The crew ready to put on 22 gallons of fuel. He's stopping at 25 laps. Here he is, the world's fastest cameraman. Windshield being clean. This car is getting, like the rest of them, about four miles to the gallon. And generally, that can go about 35 laps before a stop. He's stopping on 25, but obviously, he's taking advantage of the caution, getting two right side tire changed. Now they're going to do the left side as well. This very, very new surface on this racetrack is definitely taking its toll of tires. Probably these guys will end up changing about 16 tires before this race is over. At least that's what they plan to do before. Windshield being clean again. Every good, smooth pit stop, but it's going to be a little bit long be because of the four tire changes. There he goes. Then he underway. The tire, the car stalled, but he got it going again quickly. Back to you, Ken. Brock Gates, if you have an opportunity, we have a report. There has been signs from the observer's towers around the track that the leader, Benny Parsons' car, is beginning to show some signs of smoke coming from the rear of the machine. I wonder if you can talk with his crew chief, David If, and get that story confirmed. Here is the 106 lap being completed at the present time. There will be just 93 laps to go when they come around. 19 cars in the lead lap, more than halfway into the race, David Hobbs. That's some kind of story. Well, of course, we haven't had an awful lot of racing, unfortunately. Yet we've had so much yellow flag that's kept the field together. But boy, are they together when they're racing. We've had these 22 and 24 car drafts. Absolutely the most spectacular racing you're ever likely to see anywhere. Might get a bit more spectacular with all this stay dry down. They put down this powder to soak up the oil. And of course, the powder itself can be a little bit slippery. They're trying to get the race back under green, but they're checking this area of the track. If you're just joining us, the race started under He'd rain conditions high, today. Field down below it. Bill asking to move the dry chemical they put on the track a little higher on the track to dry when car number double zero lost its engine. Parsons is back in. The hood is up. Let's go to Brock Yates. He's hot. He's running hot. They've got a water line on the on the header tank. That is the problem. Certainly in that tight draft with Kale Yarbrough, they may have gotten things a little bit warm. Fortunately, again, he's in under the caution, so this isn't going to hurt him too bad, but it's not something they like to do. Crew Chief David Ift is very, very definitely an earnest man right now. Parsons pretty calm, pretty cool, considering the situation. Slow process to put water in these things. This is just a regular garden hose going in here. Just about got it finished. Back up to you, Kenley. I'm put afraid down. that's a pretty bad sign. If you're starting to put water in a race at the halfway mark on a 500-mile race, it's not very promising, I'm afraid. Parsons back on the track. Let's review at the halfway point in depth the standings. Parsons was in first. In the second position, Donnie Allison. In third, A.J. Foyt. Running fourth, the rookie, Dale Earnhardt. Running fifth, A.J. Foyt. Running sixth, Ty Scott. Running in seventh at that juncture was number 47, Bodine. In the eighth position was Grant Adcox. Running in ninth was Cuckoo Marlin. And in the tenth position stood Dave Watson's car, while in eleventh was Richard Childress. In twelfth was Darrell Waltrip. Richard Petty pitting in the thirteenth position was LeBounty. Fourteenth was car number 19, Bill Dennis. Fifteenth was the DK Ulrich car as Petty pits with uh, Dick May driving. Sixteenth was J.D. McDuffie. Seventeenth was the 39 car of Blackie Wengren. 18th was Frank Warren. 19th was number 98. And remember, all those cars, back to 98, Ralph Jones of Upton, Kentucky, are all in the lead lap. Patty's pit stop complete. Waltrip in the pits, trouble beneath the hood. Parsons is in another time. Back to Brock Yates. They're putting, they're putting radiator sealer in this cooling system. That, that does not bode well for this engine, as you know. Once it starts to get a leak in it, he may not be able to save it. A lot of problems down here for Benny Parsons. Back to you, Ken. It, are, it is battlefield conditions here today in the Daytona 500. Later today, NBA contest. 
the National Basketball Association with Washington versus Seattle, Chicago versus Kansas City. That's coming up next here on CBS. Consult your local listing for the game and time in your area. Here today in the 21st run into the Daytona 500 at the start-finish line with David Hobbs. I'm Ken Squire. We're one lap away from resumption of the race with 19 automobiles running in the lead lap unbelievably halfway through the race. Well, it's been a pretty unbelievable race altogether. We started off under caution for the first 10 laps, then we had some green running and the track was a bit damp. The two Allison brothers, having a tremendous dice for the lead, ran into each other coming off turn two, caused a bit of a wreck for themselves and Cale Yarbrough, put themselves down. Donnie Allison is now back on the lead lap. His brother is still one lap down, and Cale has also gained one of his laps back. Meanwhile, as you say, there are 19 cars left on this lead lap, and every time they come past here at 195 miles an hour, they are all over each other. One more lap and they will be racing. 109 laps complete, 91 to go. 272 miles have been completed. In this $588,000 shootout, the most prestigious race in the NASCAR Tour has become a bust-out today, a demolition derby time after time with cars wrecking. We saw, uh, of course, one of the most consistent runners today is a man who's had a tremendous week down here, and that's the rookie Dale Earnhardt in that yellow and blue car, number two, who right now is lying second behind Donny Allison. And car number 11, they say, is down in the bottom lane up there in turns one and two. Car number 11 being Cale Yarbrough, three-time national champion, previous winner of this race. Donny Allison in front. Remember, he was one of those puddle jumpers earlier here today. He and his brother, and Cale Yarborough sliding and spinning for a thousand feet earlier today and he's fought his way back in front. There you see Waltrip dropping way down on the inside. He wants to make up another lap, make no mistake about that. He goes up to have a chat with Donnie Allison who is saying thank you very much. I'd appreciate it if you stay where you belong. There they are. Is that Cale Yarborough right down there That's on the inside? That's Cale on the bottom yeah. and right beside him is Bobby Allison in the middle of that sandwich and the rookie Dale Earnhardt holding up beautifully on the outside. Back to go to turn three. That's Chuck Bound on the bottom, on the inside. He's a lap down. He is the former Western champion out of Portland, Oregon. His father-in-law, the famous Herschel McGriffin, here you see Manny Parsons' automobile. Parsons is running in the eighth position after these pit stops, getting ready for a start. Pulling up through traffic. Picking up speed. Here he comes. Down for the start, picking up speed. Pulls by Richard Childress. Here they come for the start. Hey, they got one coming behind you. You're going to stop by three pits beyond the Charges on into turn one. Donnie Allison in front. Dale Earnhardt is in second. Running in third, Richard Petty. Losing a spot or two here on that start. Back straight away, Bobby Allison, number 15, remember, is not with the leaders. He is a lap or two back. Kaylee Arnold also laps down for the leaders. First and second place up in front, numbers one and two. Donnie Allison, Dale Earnhardt, a rookie in second place. Can a rookie win it? Coming for the try over. Number 41, Grant Adcox is right in there. Adcox has never had good luck. Driver out of Tennessee. His dad is his crew chief. He's staying up in there well today. Adcox running third. Car number 41. Behind the two left automobiles of Bobby Allison and Kelly Armour. There they are on the turns one and two on the 31 degree bank. Back straight away. Earnhardt reels in. Donnie Allison. This is one of the most amazing midway fields that we've got. With Grant Adcox lying third, Cuckoo Marlin in fourth, and a rookie, Dale Earnhardt, lying a very, very strong second. In fact, Earnhardt's never been out of the top three. There you see that speed shot coming off turn four. Earnhardt going for the lead. Donnie Allison shuts down. A.J. Foyt pulls into third. And Fred Automobile. Back there, fifth overall in the pack is third for the lead. Two cars, lapped automobiles just in front of him. There you see the two lap cars behind the blue and yellow Earnhardt car. And coming down the back straightaway. There's A.J. Foyt, number 51, your third place machine. That's 0-2, the blue car of Dave Marcus. He is a lap or two down. He's, he's that 
O2 of Marcus behind Boyd is also a lap or two down. But 19 cars were in the lead lap. Part of 82 just went a lap down. We don't. We only have 18 cars in the lead lap now, David. Is that all? No, oh, it's not very boring. 41 Grant Adcox bringing up the rear of this front train behind O2 there, dropping back just a little bit. Grant Adcox in fourth position, A.J. Boyd in third, Dale Earnhardt running in second, Donnie Allison in the run of his career is out in front. Can he stay there? His car rumbled, ripped up on the left side, aerodynamically not working, but the driver just flat-footing the machine around the speedway stays out in front in this astonishing Daytona 500. To turn number three. Donnie Allison in that lead position. Earnhardt right there in second. And you see A.J. Foyt just holding on in third and waiting. Grant Adcock stays in fourth. Richard Petty is back in the fifth position. While in sixth is Cuckoo Marlin. Going seventh is Benny Parsons. Eighth is Ty Scott. And moving up to ninth comes Darrell Waltrip. One hundred sixteen laps, two hundred ninety miles of, into the Daytona 500, nose to nose for the lead. Earnhardt falling back beside AJ Boyd going for second place. Donnie Allison commanding the event another time. The lead continuing to switch back and forth. Donnie Allison first, AJ Boyd into second. Grant Adcox in third. Earnhardt back to fourth. Take a look at what it's like as they come into the trioval, just barely turning the wheel at one hundred ninety miles per hour. Turn that wheel about two inches and you're through the trioval. Turn it three and you could be through for the season. And you can see them working away that wheel, soaring away that wheel with these 3,700 pound cars and they've got to keep that up for 500 miles. The draft has a tremendous effect on these cars. It's not just the cars going through the trail to move them around. The wind of the other cars literally moves these cars all over the road. Using up all the racetrack. Allison coming out nearly the wall in the short straightaway to turn number one. There's Cale Yarbrough right behind him as Yarbrough continues to try to make up laps. Now remember, Yarbrough is probably one of the smartest, savviest drivers out here. He's won the national championship three years in a row. Nobody's ever done that. Here's a report from Ned Jarrett. Oh. I'm in the pits with one of the tires that they'll be putting on a car later. Richard Petty just made a 15-second pit stop the last time, and one way that they were able to do it, the lug nuts are already glued into the wheel, and they put a air reach on and just go one, two, three, four, five, and it's out. They put it on and it's back on. This is a far cry from the way they used to have to do it when they would take them off with a lug reach. Two tires and gas in 15 seconds. That's the name of the game of that team on pit road. Allison in front. Here he is in the back straightaway. Watch him when he comes through turns three and four. And there is Benny Parsons attacking once again. Parsons in first position, moving around A.J. Foyt. He's going to second spot. A.J. Foyt is slowing up dramatically. A.J. Foyt is, is off the pace. He's slowing down in turn three. Here comes Donnie Allison out of turn four. Watch him go right to the wall and use that wall like a handrail down the main straightaway into the trial. Boyd is coming on pit road. A.J. Boyd bringing car number 51, the Jim Gilmore car, onto pit road. Let's go to Brock Yates. Here comes A.J. whistling into the pits. His crew is ready. Obviously, they're going to jack the right side up. No, A.J. didn't want to stop. Another A.J. Foyt move. We're not really sure what he did, but he just came by. And uh, from our vantage point, we couldn't tell whether he wanted to tell somebody something or what, but he's gone again. Up to you, Ken. 39, Blackie Wengren. Looks like his engine is disassembling. You saw him there. Oh, momentary. there's a crash on turn three. Involving our leading group. Richard Petty's there. Leader coming down. Donnie Allison coming by. Blackie Wengren's car smoking, and there's caution on the track. Report that there is trouble at turn number three. I think it's our man Parsons. He's coming around slowly now. Parsons coming by very slowly. But he comes across the stripe. O2 oh, is in trouble. There was a good chance if Blackie Wangren's engine let go, which it looks like it did from the smoke, there's a good chance that the leading group got onto that oil on the track. Dave Marcus of Wausau, Wisconsin, 
is having trouble. And Cale Yarborough, they say, has made up still another lap. Is that correct? We have a report now that Yarborough keeps fighting his way back. And these cautions, we have yet to see anyone come in and make a green flag pit stop in this race where they come over the wall and do it in 15 seconds. I don't David. think we're going to have to see it yet. We're 121 laps into this race, and at this rate, we're never going to see a green. Well, they've only got to go another 80-odd uh, laps, and they can do nearly 50 anyway, so we'd, we'd, we'll be lucky to see a green flag pit stop. It has been one of the most savage, brutal 500s ever run at Daytona. This is the 21st annual. As the purse climbed to nearly $600,000, leaders are pitting. Donnie Allison is on pit road, a lonely pace car waiting for someone to join him. Brock Yates in the pits. Donnie's in. Right side tires look good. The left side coming up. They're going to change both left side tires. Paul Ellington just told me that the car's getting good tire wear and everything seems to be buttoned back up, although it looks like it spent about 20 years on the Harbor Freeway. There he goes, back out. Up to you, Ken. It certainly doesn't look like a proper stock car, does it? Well, actually, it looks like a proper short track car with that side all akimbo. There's Earnhardt's car coming back out. A squirrel of action. And car number two is back on the track. We're working in the 122nd lap, ladies and gentlemen. A.J. Foyt is now in the pits. They have completed 305 miles, just 78 laps to go. There are 11 cars still in the lead lap of this, the most unpredictable Daytona 500 that's ever been run. I can't understand why A.J. made that slowing down pit stop before. He slowed up, came in, and then just drove out again. Most peculiar. Brock Yates is trying to get a report right now on why A.J. came in. It may have been a missed signal down there. The Gilmore car going back on the track. But he suddenly slowed up going through three and four. I mean, it did look as if he had some sort of trouble. Perhaps he thought a tire had gone or something and came in as he was there. And there you see number 02, Dave Marcus. We saw that car being built about a month ago up at Banjo Matthews in Arden, North Carolina. Back to Brock Yates in the pits. Ken, we just found out why May A.J. made that mysterious stop. His crew chief, Dick Hutcherson, as you know, is an old-timer in racing, spotted the yellow flag come out at just as he drew to a stop and said, go one more time and we'll come in when we've got a little bit more leisurely place to make it. That's why. So he's back out again with a quick stop. Up to you. So it was no mistake. It was just a quick maneuver on the part of the crew chief. There you see one of the cars in the race built by one of the most amazing stories in automobile racing. The story of a man up in North Carolina. This frozen bit of acreage behind me is Buncombe County, North Carolina. And those mountains are the Great Smokies. They do a lot of hunting and fishing around here, grow some tomatoes and some apples. But they also build grand national stock cars. Inside this building, every 1978 Grand National winner was welded together. The doing of this man, Banjo Matthews. As with most members of the Southern Stock Car Fraternity, Banjo's pace is deceivingly relaxed, with long hours devoted to chatter about racing. But in the shop, the work schedule is quick and determined. Here, a small, skilled squad of craftsmen bond a pile of steel tubing into the stiff and incredibly safe combination chassis and roll cage that forms the skeleton of Grand National stock cars. Internally, the machines are the same, whether they are finely shrouded with sheet metal of a General Motors, Ford, or Chrysler brand automobile. The technique is a distillation of years of trial and error of failure and horrendous crashes. Out of these ordeals, men like Banjo Matthews will create for you, for about $60,000, one of the safest, most reliable racing cars known to man. If most of the great cars in Grand National Racing began their lives here at Banjo Matthews, a good percentage of them end their lives here as well on this million dollar pile of bent iron and steel that stands as a gravestone to most of the great crashes in Grand National Racing. They'll be able to add a few more after today, David Hobbs. There you see the Marcus car coming in on the hook. Marcus hopes have evaporated today. There's been problems for Dale Earnhardt. Ned Jarrett has the story. 
The rookie has been running up front all afternoon, Ken, but on his last pit stop, they changed all four tires. This is one of the tires that came off the left side, and it's been rubbing on the fender. We have Roland Wallotica, who's the crew chief on that car. Roland, is that a problem? Not really. It's been on there two full pit stops, so we had to get it off anyway. But the tire feels extremely hot. They're warm. We blistered a right front tire in 30 laps before. That's why we made a four-tire stop on this time to get some scuffs back on. Is there not anything you could do about that fender rubbing? Not, it, it's not a problem. It does that all the time, and it's not going to blow a tire. Okay, it looks to me like it's a problem, Ken, but he knows a lot more about it than I do. Blow a tire, famous last words. We are back under caution for the sixth time today in the 21st annual Daytona 500. We'll be back live with more of the action in a moment. From the Goodyear blimp, you see some of the over 100,000 gathered here at the two and a half mile World Center of Speed, Daytona Beach, Florida. In perhaps the most unpredictable, astonishing 500 ever run here. As they come down for a green flag, Donnie Allison in first, Richard Petty in second, Dale Earnhardt in third, Ty Scott is fourth, Terry Labonte in fifth, Darrell Waltrip is shown in the sixth position. So we got three out of the first six are rookies in this race. Dale Earnhardt, Ty Scott, and Terry Labonte. Ty Scott's not really a rookie, but he's not usually up there with the leader. Yarborough, number 11. Two laps down. 75 laps to go. Let's listen to Bill Gazaway as they get ready to resume it. Long now, 41. All yours, Mr. Starter. Green flag. There you see the start once again. Starting them up for the seventh time today. Rain and crashes. The story of this thing from the 500. Chuck Bowen up there now in second place on the road. Down about three laps from the leaders. And there you see Yarborough trying to get back out in front to make up another lap as he knows there are 11 cars in the lead lap running less than two and a half seconds apart. There you see Richard Petty as Jonathan Livingston Stegall comes in to take a look at what's going on in the back straight away. Petty becoming more and more of a factor running right in front of Dale Earnhardt in third spot. It'd take a brave man to bet on Richard Petty not winning the Daytona 500, which he's already won five times. Six times the national champion, five times the Daytona winner. Cale Yarborough's won it twice. Everybody else since 1959 has won it but once. I've never seen so much darting and weaving go on in any race ever, anywhere. The way they keep pulling in and out of the draft is just absolutely staggering. Really quite heart-stopping. Off those corners like a dancing puppet, they fly down the back straightaway at nearly 200 miles an hour. And there's that tight draft for second place. There's the tight draft between the leader and the car two laps down. Have you noticed how Cale Yarbrough seems to have the ability to pull away a current leader of the race and, and get his own two-car draft? Paul Tessa, number 82, is having trouble with his foot. He's running down at the bottom of the track in turns three and four as we watch these leaders. Look at this. Dale Yarbrough hooked on to Donny Allison, and can they pull away from Richard Petty and Dale Earnhardt? If they can, and there's another yellow flag, old Cale Yarbrough will have picked up yet another lap of the three he was down. A master tactician. Cale Yarbrough is only one lap down. There's ten cars on the lead lap, and Cale Yarbrough is only one lap down. If he can pull this off again, He's already done it twice. He could be back there on the lead lap with Donnie Allison, who's also gained laps under the yellow flag. A shallow lead for car number one, Donnie Allison. When he stares in his rear view, all he sees are the eyes of Kaylee Arborough staring him down at top speed. <laughs> and they're pretty, pretty tough little eyes, too, aren't they? Just in a moment. Donnie Allison maintains that front running position. Richard Petty begins to close in from second place with old 43. We'll be back with more live coverage of the Daytona 500 after this word from your local stations. Well, they've ground out 131 laps, 327 and a half miles, just 69 laps to go. Donnie Allison trying to hold on. His car pummeled and beaten here thus far in the race. Is in the advantage point. The 
present time, he has a lead of about 20 car lengths over number 43, Richard Petty, in second spot. Dale Earnhardt maintaining third. Ty Scott is stabilized in fourth. Darrell Waltrip is still in fifth. Labounty is in sixth. Parsons is in seventh. There you see some of the 100,000 people who have been able to sit down all afternoon as this race continues to shake, ramble, and roar. 11 cars still in the lead lap, fighting about three and a half seconds apart. To give you an idea of this draft, when you watch these two lead cars going down the back straight, Kale Yarbrough's going to make ground on Donny Allison. Do you imagine next time you pull up at the stoplight, right up to the car in front, that's what it's like for him at 195 to 200 miles an hour. Just look at that gap, inches away. Drops back a little bit as they go into the turn. There you see Donny Allison in second place. His efforts to win a second Daytona 500 in a row to plunge it. As he spun with his brother and Kelly Arboro off on the back straight away. The race. Donny Allison in front. Here comes Petty, the grandmaster, who has gone more than a season without a win. His car always seems to work better in the latter part of a race. When the other cars begin to get very slippery and oily down to the track, Petty's car just grits it, bites into it, and begins to move in on leaders. And that's what number 43 Petty is doing right now. He has waited out this tide of wrecks and unbelievable events we've seen so far today. Here he is in second place, Richard Petty trying to break a 45 race losing streak and closing on the leader, Donnie Allison. Donnie Allison stays in front. Cale Yarbrough just one lap down, trying to get that lap back. Richard Petty in second. Here you see them on the 31 degree banking at the east end of the two and a half mile Daytona International Speedway. With Richard Petty second, Earnhardt third, Scott fourth, Parsons fifth, Waltrip in the sixth position, Waltrip on the move among the leaders. Parsons stays in front. Look at this. Feels for the lead. Looks like a little smoke out of it. the number 15, Bobby Allison's car. Now watch all the way around. Every lap has to be exactly right. A blown engine. Another car goes up in smoke. I think it's Gary Ballou's car. Car number 82 dropping down on the inside rail. That's Paul Gass. Carborough trying to make up the lap. This is the thing, if Kale can lead across the start finish line, he's picked up that lap. Caution is coming on, here's Kale trying to make up a lap. If Donny Allison gets back in front of him, he'll put him on a lap down. They must race here at the start finish line. Kale Yarborough, here's Donny Allison trying to get the lap back on a slingshot. Yarborough makes it up, he's back in the lap with the leaders. 12 cars now in the lead lap as we move down to the end of this Daytona 500. I keep using the word incredible, David. Never seen anything like this. Here's Ned. Here with Junior Johnson, a very elated crew as Cale Yarbrough went across that start-finish line to get back in the same lap with the leader. Junior, that guy never gives up. Well, he's doing a tremendous job right now. If we keep it together, we might have a shot to win it. You had to make a lot of adjustments on that car after the spin-out. Well, we've just about completely redone it since we wrecked it, uh, Ned, so we got a lot to do to it. I just hope it stays together. Ken, several times last year in winning their third or president Grand National Championship, they were several laps down, but they always fought back in some of those races they won. Well, there he is, the old Grand Master, the last American hero he is called Junior Johnson who has just one instruction for Cale Yarborough. Go to the front. And indeed, he has put himself back in the front lap, and there will be 10 cars running for the lead. Car number one, Donnie Allison, is back in the pits. Number one. And let's go to Brock Gates. Here comes Donnie. It's a routine stop, right side tires this time. Everything going normally. Donnie, very cool. Incredibly cool man, both these Allisons. Never seem to be ruffled, no matter what happens. Quick stop, back to you, Ken. Out comes car number one, Donnie Allison, probably giving up the lead. We now have reported 10 cars in the lead lap. There will be 10 automobiles. Hey, on CBS, coming up next Saturday and next Sunday, from Los Angeles, the Los Angeles Open, the Glen Campbell, don't miss it here on CBS. Marianne Bunch has a report for us now. 
I'm in the start finish grandstands with some of the fans, and I have someone here I'd like to make a question I put to you. How long have you been coming to the Daytona 500? Uh, since about 1962, I think, 63. What's your name? Louise Vermilia. And you said you lived here in Florida, right? We live in Ormond Beach. What do you think of the 21st running of the Daytona 500? Oh, I think it's terrific. I'm sorry about the accident so far. I'm very happy that no one was hurt. Thank you very much. Ken, back to you. Staunch race fan there since 1962. Staunch race fans paying the money for the seats, keeping us racing drivers employed, because I can see me not being employed in here much longer. Dale Earnhardt didn't come into the pits on that lap then when everybody else did, so I wonder, does that put him a lap ahead, taking a risk like that? He's gone round twice now, and everybody else has pulled... No, of course they haven't. They've pulled out behind him. That's why I'm not down there, and I'm up here. Pace car has, has picked up the field. Earnhardt is, is still in it. And there's Kaylee Arbro's pits, Ned Jarrett. Kale Yarborough in the pits. He's made that lap up now. They go for a right side tire change. Kale gets him a cool drink, and he has a smile on his face now. He's a little bit happier than he was earlier in the race. Now they're going to the left side to make a four tire change. They can do this in about 35 seconds. It takes about 15 to 18 seconds when they only change two tires, but only five men are allowed over the wall when they make a pit stop. He's down and away. That's quick enough to change my trousers. Four tire change, and Kelly Yarborough is out. He is back with the leaders. And we could have a three time winner. Benny Parsons is in. There you see the hood is up. Yeah, but Benny's having some trouble the, under the hood there. He's maintaining on the lead lap, all right, and he's maintaining a good pace. The car goes well when he's out. It's overheating. There's water running out from beneath the automobile. Boy, he certainly, he and his crew, David Ift, have given it their best try today. Hood coming down crew working on that automobile. There you see the visibility all these drivers have. You talk about pressure and, and working under. Well, the, the, visi the visibility thing. definitely goes off. There's a lot of sand. We've got one lap to go, a half a lap to go before a green flag. When they race here, you know, the sand picks up and it scrapes the screen clean and oh, dirty, you know, it pits it. It's very hard, the sand down here. And as the race progresses, it just gets terrible. The visibility becomes almost nil. The green flag. That catalyst to bring these 11 drivers back together for another start is about to be unfurled with Dale Earnhardt, the rookie, out in front. One lap and they will be racing. One lap and Dale Earnhardt of Kannapolis, North Carolina, will lead the pack with Donna Allison from Hueytown, Alabama in second. A.J. Foyt of Houston, Texas running third with 140 laps complete. The end of the Daytona 500, just 60 laps to go. Seven cautions today. Slowest 500 in history, perhaps the most eventful. Well, it certainly has been what one would describe as an action-packed afternoon. <laughs> I'll say. I can't get over the Allison brothers. Donnie has just had an absolutely... Well, Bobby's had a fantastically wild ride. He's been run into at least three times, quite hard, and he's still in the race. Donnie's been run into at least once. kale has been in the mud up to his axles, and, and there they are out in front. David, we've seen a lot of tumultuous finishes here at Daytona, but I've got a feeling we're in for one today like we've never seen before. We've never had 10 automobiles running together this late in the race, in the same lap, and they are reconfirming just now, we're talking to scoring, that Cale Yarborough indeed is in that lead lap. So this is it. And you can hear the crowd perhaps behind us as they've just announced in the public address that Yarborough is back in the lead lap and they love him. I think within about the next 10 minutes, we're going to see Cale Yarborough take the lead of this race for the first time this afternoon. Cale Yarborough, one of the most incredible characters I've ever met. He still enjoys a Sunday afternoon duck hunting or fishing or catching water moccasins barehanded. Quite a guy. I originally was uh, in a farm team for the Washington Redskins in football. We're going to listen to Bill Gasaway as we come down for a start. We're back in the control tower. You're hearing the signals being given. Okay, all yours, Mr. Starter. Green flag. Green flag. The flag swirling, the car swirling down into this tri-oval area. Dale Earn. Bobby Allison with Dale Earnhardt now. Donnie Allison right behind Dale Earnhardt. 
we could have five, six, seven cars jamming for the finish on this one today. We could have a rookie win the race. The biggest race of the, the lot, the Daytona 500, could be won by Dale Earnhardt. Not if Donnie Allison has his way. He takes it away from the kid. Donnie Allison presses. Puts the old pedal to the metal, David. It's a cliche, Kenley, that is absolutely right this afternoon. Their feet are buried right through that firewall. Look at Dale, uh, Dale right up high. A.J. Foyt maintaining third position behind the Allison car. Ty Scott stays in fourth. And that is an amazing story. Ty Scott still up there in fourth, another young driver, sophomore driver. Back to the pits with Brock Yates. Can we, we're here in the uh, MC Anderson pit with David F., the crew chief for Benny Parsons. David, you're, you're having some problems relating to the cool system, exact, cooling system. Exactly what is it? Well, we don't know for sure. We've got a cracked head or head gasket or something. We've been trying to seal it up, and we just hope we can keep getting some cautions and keep sealing it, because when we run about 30, 32 laps, temperature rise about 260, 270. So we're just holding on. Okay, thank you. Our man with the camera out there not doing quite as well as we'd hoped, but uh, he's still in there. Up to you, Ken. I'll say he's still in there. He's running. There he is, drafting right along behind Richard Petty. Now we're seeing the other thing, that Richard Petty, you were saying he goes strong late in the race. The other thing he does late in the race is he goes incredibly high. Now let's watch them all the way around from just one camera. Give you a feeling for what a driver copes with. No cuts here, just watch as they string out like beads down the back straightaway at 200 miles an hour. That draft there is good for 200 miles an hour. Now they climb the 31 degree banking at the east end of the Daytona Speedway. You're watching Donnie Allison in front, a rookie Dale Earnhardt in second. Here they come through that 1600 foot straight away to the tri -over. Up they come on the 15th degree banking right in front of our announce location. Here they come into the 1600 feet leading down into turn number one. No room for a miscue, pressure on all the time except for those few spare seconds on pit road. And notice how they're climbing way up on the banking as it's getting very slippery. That's how it looks all the way around one time. Make one miscue, one slight misjudgment. And in this one, your history, except for the fact that drivers, the top drivers like Donnie Allison and Cale Yarborough and Bobby Allison are out here making up laps. Cale Yarborough's back in the hunt. It might be interesting to find Cale Yarborough and see if he's able to pull by some automobiles here as he tries to hunt down the leader, Donnie Allison. At two and a half miles, he's covered in just about 47 odd seconds. Incredible. Ten cars in the lead lap. The lead lap is the 146. Just 54 laps to go. And we could have a gang finish here today. We may remember in 1959, Lee Petty winning this race. The race was so close, it took three days to decide the winner. Now they have electronic cameras, side photo finishes here in Daytona. But we may have four or five cars assaulting the tri-oval in the last lap of this epic $588,000 battle. Donnie stays in front, Earnhardt in second, A.J. Foyt in third, Ty Scott a surprise in fourth. Richard Petty stays in fifth, Cale Yarborough moving into sixth. Benny Parsons, Detroit, Michigan, Ellaby, North Carolina, in a long time. And this will put him out of the hunt. This will put him, in fact, when the leaders come by right now, that'll put him two laps down at least. There are the leaders. A 10-car draft. Nine of them running for the lead. There's Parsons' car. The hood is buttoned down. The pins are in, and he comes back on the track. A valiant effort goes for naught. Back on the track. The temperature inside that cockpit about 120 degrees all day. And it's a cool day here. There you see the leaders going back up into turn three. And they're all over there. Donnie Allison, the third place car in your picture, remember, is a couple of laps back. But Donnie Allison is the leader. Earnhardt is in second. The red car of A.J. Boyd is. And there isn't room to put your hand between the bumpers. There absolutely is now. 
in total posted awards today. 64,500 for first, about 41,000 for second. That is in the total posted awards. That's an awful lot of money between the first and second. Back to Benny Parsons Pitts. We're back with David M. Benny Parsons, crew chief. David, a long stop. Any more uh, diagnosis? Yeah, we got a cracked head or something. We're probably going to have to go up. Can, can it last? <laughs> if it rains. <laughs> Not so good. Back to you. A very disappointed crew chief, and no doubt a very disappointed Benny. He won this race in 1975, three. Uh, and he'd like to have another crack at it. The money now is tremendous for this race. And, of course, every race counts for the NASCAR Cup points fund. And you've just got to keep on earning those points if you want to pick up all that money at the end of the year. Can you imagine the mental stress on these drivers? Inches apart at this tremendous speed, and there has been no break. No chance except under these caution periods in the pits. When they're out here, there just hasn't been room to breathe all afternoon, David. This is one of the closest races I've ever seen anywhere. There we get an idea of just how close. As you say, you couldn't put your hand between Dale Earnhardt and Don Donnie Allison. Chuck Bound just went down a lap, and there are nine cars running the lead lap. There's Richard. Up high, as always. I don't know what it is about Richard Petty, why he runs so high. He loves it up there close to the wall. Leaders in that short shoot. There he goes. Look, almost tags the wall there. In he fact, loves I, it. I don't think he feels very happy unless he's absolutely scraping down the wall. I think he really knows where he is then. It is Donnie Allison in first. Dale Earnhardt deployed in second position. Then Bobby Allison running a couple of laps back as the caravan cavorts down the backstretch. At top speed, the third place automobile is A.J. Foyt. The fourth spot is Ty Scott. Is Richard Petty being challenged? Petty being challenged. And moving around out there, Cale Yarborough right behind Petty. Here is Cale Yarborough going into fifth. Remember, Yarborough has come from three laps down to fight his way back into the leaders. Yarborough now running the leaders behind Petty in six is Darrell Waltrip still lurking in seventh. With many people, he was the favorite for today's race. He won the first event of the year at Riverside, California. Donnie Allison in front, continuing to repulse the advances of Dale Earnhardt. The span from first to eighth position, 154 laps into the event. How about this? Less than two seconds. Who's going to win it? Nine contenders are all in here together late in the race. Benny Parsons pitting again. It's over for Parsons. He may just continue to run out here, but it will not be a Benny Parsons day. It's amazing to me how quickly that car of Donnie Allison's goes with that great gash in the side. It's the same as Donnie Allison as well. Put is up on Parsons' car. I'm afraid that uh, once you start having water problems on the car like that on a race, you can more or less say you've had it, you know, there's just no chance. He's what now, he's four laps down now. The engine tortured at car number 27 and beginning to give up. The heart of the car beginning to go. It's over for Benny Parsons, but for nine others, they are still very in the butch in the thick of it to decide this race, which will not be decided until the fourth turn. Live from Daytona Beach, 21st annual Daytona 500. There you see the standings. Allison at first, the rookie Dale Earnhardt holds on in second in front of A.J. Foyt. Then Ty Scott, now Cayley Arborough into fourth. And you are watching A.J. Foyt holding his own in that red automobile just behind the leader. And there you see Donnie Allison in the battered fatigue car number one, lurching around this speedway at top speed, holding on like a heavyweight champion in the latter rounds of a world championship fight, trying to fend off not just one opponent, one contender, but eight others trying to take that first spot away from him. Here they are out of turn number two. Can Donnie Allison with his car from that shot when he spun a thousand feet off turn number two earlier with his brother and Kelly Yarborough hold on. Yarborough is back up right in the standings. Earnhardt, the big unknown commodity, the young kid from Kannapolis, North Carolina. And there is Darrell Waltrip closing out Richard Petty. Waltrip in seventh, Petty in sixth. Darryl there Waltrip. you see them all. Darrell Waltz has been running incredibly well all week, but they got off to bad start. Ten lap yellow run. His engine fouled up one of the plugs, and they had to change the plugs, and there he is, right back up into sixth position.
Another man who's gone very well this afternoon is young Ty Scott. He started off in 33rd spot, and he's now running a very strong fourth, and he's not really used to racing with these guys. He must have some very good equipment. It's probably the first time he's had such good equipment. He is the biggest surprise in the race for me. Dale Earnhardt, of course, is a rookie, running in very strong second, but he's been showing tremendous form all week, so it's no real surprise to us here. A press of nine automobiles for the lead, out of turn four. If they can just keep this up for another few laps, we might yet see a green pit. We'll see how the crews really were then. Lapping a car, Donnie Allison. Again, he's up into the turn, and from this vantage point, you can see how the left side of car number one is slightly warped from his shot earlier. Right here in turn two is where he nearly went side over side. 100 miles to go. His car came off that point where we've just seen it right now. His car came off at about that speed on one wheel earlier in this race. How he can gather himself back up under that kind of stress and go out here and race is the mark of the professional. Earnhardt drops to the inside here. Dale Earnhardt slowing down. Earnhardt coming in will put a watch on him for his pit stop. This is a stop under green. Second place pulls on pit road. Those turns now just a curved patch of oil, gas, and metal. Let's go to the pits. This is a scheduled pit stop for Earnhardt. He did not stop during the last caution period. I really question why he did not stop. Roland Melodica says he can go the rest of the distance from here on. The only difference is the other competitors had to have about 20 laps, and they had a problem. They didn't get the jack down. Now he's off and running. But the other competitors have about 20 laps on Earnhardt now to work and hopefully get a caution to make their stop. Uh, the field is coming out of turn number four as Earnhardt is rolling down pit road. Earnhardt is out on the track, but he's running slowly. He's only up to 80 or 90 minutes. He could go a lap down here. Here comes the field by Donnie Allison leading the pack as they head up into the banking. Dale Earnhardt's going to go a lap down. Here we come into turn number two. They're trying to put a lap on Dale Earnhardt, who has been running in second, the rookie. Let's see if this strategy is going to work. They're into the back straightaway. There is Earnhardt just in front. That big draft pulls alongside Earnhardt. A lap down. But the strategy is he can go home from here. He does not have to pit again. We'll see if that strategy works. I doubt very much if it will. It seemed a funny thing to me last time we had a yellow that he didn't pull in and everybody else did. I sometimes doubt the judgment of the team that uh, Dale Earnhardt drives for. A.J. Foyt's pits, that's where the story is now. Here's Brock Yates. Ken, we've got Dick Hutcherson and the builder of A.J. Foyt's car here. Dick, how does it look out there? Well, there's a lot of cars running for the lead right now, but we're running second at the time. We've only got to make one more pit stop, so I think we've got a shot at it. Is he, uh, he's running pretty strong. Can he run stronger? Only A.J. knows that, but uh, we've had our problems this week, and he's kind of been keeping his nose clean out there, and we'll try to make a run for it at the end. Watch that 51, Kenley. Up to you. Car number 51 right in there in this tight pack. Also, it's what's that number 11? Nine cars are running on the last lap, seven tenths of a second apart. Nine automobiles less than one second apart. Eight of them are now running for first place. Bobby Allison, no doubt, praying for another yellow, hoping he can lead just for a short bit, get a yellow, and take off his one remaining lap in arrears. And you, and you would wonder if the Allison brothers might work together here and if Bobby might try to bring Donnie, whether Donnie bring Bobby around. Their dad and mother both here watching. They saw Bobby win it a year ago. Donnie is in second place. Uh, Donnie is in first place. Uh, in second here on a couple of previous occasions. Uh, here's someone. That's Cale Yarborough down to the inside. The crowd is going. Uh, some people shouting up on their feet as Cale Yarborough begins to continue to pull up. Donnie Allison Side still by. in front. Cale Yarbrough takes away second spot from A.J. Foyt. From three laps down to second place. One pit stop to go. 
Look at this crowd. Watching. Absolutely incredible exhibition of determination. And that perfected racing finesse that has marked Kaylee Arborough as one of the greatest champions in racing. From three laps down, he's battled his way back into second position. Kaylee Arborough is about to make his assault on Donnie Allison. His place in the 21st Daytona 500. Live, you're watching the Daytona 500 coming up later this afternoon on CBS, NBA regional contest with Washington against Seattle and Chicago up against Kansas City. That's coming up next today here on CBS. Coming up next here, heaven only knows. Nine competitors are running for the lead. Here they come, down still another time to complete the 106 lap, just 80 miles to go. It is going to be a land rush to decide the Daytona 500. They nudge in and out, inches apart, running less than one second apart in what could be the most amazing finish we have ever seen in motorsport. The cars could back to the finish line. Allison is first. Kale Yarborough has made up a remarkable three laps to run in second place. Bobby Allison still runs directly behind his brother. And that is the exact order, David Hobbs. Donnie first, Bobby then, and Kaylee Arbor. They were running it as first, second, and third when they crashed in turn two earlier in this race. It is an exact repeat of that scenario. Let's hope that it doesn't happen again. AJ Foyt tucked in right behind Kaylee Arbor with Richard Bennett going immediately behind him. Dale Earnhardt is racing furiously with Ty Scott and Kale, uh, Darrell Waltrip just back there, just off the pace. He has to maintain with his group because if he drops off, when they all stop next time, He's got to try and make up a lap on them to have any chance of winning this race. It's a long shot. It's a long gamble. There's Betty Parsons' automobile. That is the view that no driver likes to see, the view of a back marker, and no one to chase down, no one to go on. The leader screaming by Benny Parsons, and all he can do is hold on. And now he begins to ache, he begins to hurt more than ever as he realizes there's no chance for him today. 13 race leaders, 29 lead changes thus far. 20 cars remain on the track, 21 cars in the final. Ty Scott falling off the pace there in fifth spot. And Dale Earnhardt getting stuck behind him. He really needs to be right up there with the leaders, uh, preferably leading the race, because if there's a yellow flag, he can do what Kelly Arbor did and get that lap back. Donnie Allison, who won that controversial race at the end of last season, Atlanta, Georgia. Down there, rain now, but it will stay together. The laps ticking away. 170 laps now completed. 75 miles to go. Excruciating the pressure. Top speed. And there's just no place for a mistake here. They're all on them. Here you have some of the very best. Cale Yarborough in second, Foyden in, in third. And you know the story of Foyt, the only man to ever win Indianapolis four times. He's won here, he's won Le Mans. He can win in anything he puts his foot in. Now, these two, at the moment, the pressure really, in a way, is off. There's 75 miles to go, if you can call the pressure being off when they're that close together. Their main problem now will be tire wear, because as the traffic has died down on the track, there's not so many cars left running, these men could conceivably run like this right to the end of the race. Whoa, Donnie Allison slowing down. Donnie Allison is slowing and Bobby Allison is coming in. They're on pit road. The leader is pitting the Haas Ellington crew is ready for Donnie Allison. Bobby Allison coming in first. Remember, he is a couple of laps down directly behind him. Car number one is in. Let's go to Brock Yates. This is the last one. This is where it's really serious. Look at this crew go to work. What a crew. The two outside tires, the right side tires are being changed. 22 gallons of fuel being put on board. A very, very quick stop, it looks like. Yes, he's underway. How about 12 seconds for two tires and fuel? 12 and 3 tenths of a second. Donnie Allison is back on the track. A.J. Boyd is now the leader of the Daytona 500. Supertech slides a little in turn four and gathers it up. Boyd and Kelly Arbor are wheel to wheel. We've had a report that the hood pin is out of car number two. That's Dale Earnhardt. And I can see the hood is, in fact, at the right-hand corner in your picture. The front of Dale Earnhardt's hood is up. 
Richard Petty is pitted. Petty has come in. Here you see the battle for the lead. It's AJ, the star of the United States Honor Club, Kale Yarborough for the NASCAR. They're side by side. And they have tremendous respect. There's Petty leaving the pits. Petty is getting back out quickly. The battle is contained in turn number three. Still wheel to wheel. Kale Yarborough going in front. Yarborough going for his third win, AJ for his second. Now AJ drops to the inside. And for over 100 racing enthusiasts, this is magic. This is what it's all about. The King AJ Foyt from Houston, Texas. And with him, Cale Yarborough, the King of Timmonsville, South Carolina, and these two dueling for supremacy. Foyt has saved it. He's waited. Foyt is just such a brilliant driver. He waits you out. He works on you. He'll tap you once in a while the stock car. He loves stock car racing. And he loves to come down here and run against these NASCAR competitors. He doesn't do that more than three or four times a year. And here he is carrying the Jim Gilmore colors into turn number three. Now riding the draft of the Junior Johnson car number 11. Of course, AJ Point is a racing racer. And of course, he dearly loved to win this race again. Cale Yarbrough pulling into the pits, putting Point into the lead of this race. Yarbrough is in. Carol Waltrip is taking over in second place. Ned Jarrett is standing by in Junior's pits. This is the most crucial stop they've made all day because it's under the green flag. They've got to get back out, hopefully, ahead of the other cars or at least be able to catch their draft when they come by. It's a change of right side tires. They're already down and away. A very quick pit stop for K.O. Yarborough. 13 and 9 10 seconds. Meanwhile, there's trouble for Ty Scott. As he started to come out pit road, you can see K.O. Yarborough going by him. Ty Scott unfortunately right fell right into the trap, came into the pits far too fast and slid by his pit with his right front tire locked up. That'll cost him precious, precious seconds. Now, you saw, a whole it, now you saw what it's all about. Pit stop at 13 and 9 tenths seconds. The driver turns it over to that pit crew of five men for just 14 seconds. That's the only break he gets. A.J. Boyd is now pitting car number 51. We'll be back with more live coverage this work from your local stations. Well, Darrell Waltrip just came in and he made a pit stop in nine seconds. They did not take on tires. We just added 22 gallons of fuel and sent Waltrip back out. We're trying to find out what the strategy is on Waltrip. There you see Kaylee Amaro's number 11. Unofficially, we're showing him in second place now as all these cars have made these stops. Yarbrough just passed Darrell Walton there for what it's worth. I'm not quite sure where Darrell and Kale are in relationship to each other after that spate of pit stops. We're waiting for confirmation after all the leaders have made pit stops. Look at the scramble. Darrell Walton's car, when it drove past the, the stand here, sounded rough to me again, like it did early in the race. The engine may be going sour on Waltrip's car, but there's nothing sour. These two cars crashed and spun for a thousand feet in the back straightaway. And here they are, two of the masters, Donnie Allison from Hueytown, Alabama, Kaylee Arboro in a tight draft. We keep talking about the speed, but that's over 195 miles an hour, and the laps are running out. As you watch it live from Daytona Beach, Florida, with David Hobbs, I'm Ken Squire here at the start finish line, delighted to bring you flag the of what has been the most incredible 500 mile race I have ever witnessed. Well, Kale, Kale Yarbrough is the absolute master tactician. He's right exactly where he wants to be with just 21 short laps to go. There he is. There have been seven We started the race under a rain condition. There you see the top four. Now, Waltrip may be slipping back. Waltrip is having apparently an engine that is beginning to sound anything but harmonious. Sounds unharmonious. Extremely. Donnie Allison and Cale Yarbrough now in a two car draft, all on the road. Donnie Allison. Ah, there they are. Now, these two are the top champions. Remember, A.J. has won more races in the United States Auto Club than any driver in their history. And Richard Petty has done the same in NASCAR. And they're the leaders again. Donnie Allison first, Kaylee Amaro in second. 
AJ is reported in fourth, Richard Petty in fifth. That's the battle for fourth, as we are told. NASCAR is now double checking the photo finish camera. They expect it to go to a photo finish today at the end of 500 miles. Here's Brock. Ken, we're with Buddy Parrott in the Darrell Waltrip's pit. Buddy, we're a little mystified why you didn't change tires on that last stop. Well, you know, we're uh, we're running a little behind. We're, we're uh, running on a uh, closed up uh, spark plug. It'll run halfway, but it runs good in the draft. So we're just gambling, you know, the tires look good and everything. So we're just, uh, we came here to win the race any way we could. And that's why we're, uh, that's why we did that. Thank you, buddy. Big gamble on the part of Darrell Waltrip and his crew. Back to you, Ken. Richard Petty has made eight pit stops today. A.J. Foyt has made eight stops, and there is Petty. Remember, they are fighting for fourth now and closing on the leaders. Actually, Petty will stay right there and run behind A.J. in that draft and try to close up, and we may have five cars charging to the finish line at the end of this race. Well, they're about nine seconds down on the two leaders, both of whom are running in identical situations. Donnie Allison and Cale Yarber together as a nice pair, and Foyt and Petty as another pair. Both getting the most out of their four cars, respectively, but unfortunately, can they make up nine seconds in less than 20 laps? They'll be jolly lucky to. Don't forget, the NBA action is coming next. The excitement of basketball and its professional best is up next on CBS this afternoon. What a battle here. Continuing to grapple for first position, Donnie Allison and Kaylee Arborough. That's the biggest advantage anyone has had in 500 miles. Thus far today, 182 laps complete. To be specific, 455 miles today. Donnie Allison and Cale Yarbrough putting a lap on Ty Scott there, who had a very good afternoon, probably his best ever. But unfortunately, his inexperience at this really tough racing came out in the end. They're closing on Waltrip for third place. Waltrip just barely holding on to third. A.J. Boyd cinches up the seatbelt a little tighter, clenches those tough old Texan teeth, and he goes after Waltrip. And Waltrip will know he's in a fight now. To get down toward the end, and A.J. is within striking distance of a checkered flag. He's on the last lap run at an average speed, the 183rd lap by Donnie Allison and Cale Yarbrough in a draft at 193.9 miles per hour. The 1979 Daytona 500 will be remembered as the battle of the reinsurgents here today. Both Donnie Allison and Cale Yarbrough coming from laps down, now in a tight draft, a two-car draft, two cars together, nose to tail, running faster than one car by itself, have drawn away from the second place car, A.J. Foyt just passing Richard Petty. That is the third place car, A.J. Foyt, Richard Petty back to fourth, Darrell Walter falling to fifth, and they are 15 seconds down to those leaders. The two leaders have got, again, the perfect situation, just a two-car draft, and they're pulling away quite rapidly. At nearly a second a lap, they're making on that second group. Well, we may have to go away and come back on this photo finish today. I'll tell you, it may be that close. Ned Jarrett in the Junior Johnson pits. Ned. Junior Kale seems to be content running right on Donnie Allison's bumper. Is he going to run that way to the end, or what is your strategy? Well, I think Kale will stay there probably to the last lap, and then he'll try to get Donnie either down the back stretch or coming off the fourth turn. Just uh, hard to say. He knows pretty much where he can set him up at and get by him, and that's where he'll try it. And if everything goes like he planned, I, he might make it, you know. Okay, that's the strategy from Junior Johnson and Kale Yarborough. They're going to wait for the last lap to make that move. Donny Allison must be one nervous man now, just wondering what's going on in that beady brain of old Kale Yarbo, one of the master tacticians. And look at him, weaving in and out. He has to drop out of that draft every now and then. He can't just stay there forever because he has to get cool air to the engine. Remember, it's $64,000 plus for first, about $40,000 for second. It now appears it will be decided between this pair. Donnie Allison, who has been trying to win this race since 1967, has never done it. And there is the battle for third. A.J. Foyt now leads that trio with Richard Petty in fourth, Darrell Waltrip in fifth. And for the moment, 15 seconds back, unless there is a caution, we would have to say that it goes very much to a two-car dice to decide it at the finish line. Back to Brock Yates. Can we? Ken, we've got Haas Ellington, Donnie Allison's crew chief. 
We just heard that uh, Junior Johnson said that Kale is going to probably wait and try to make a shot on the last lap. What is Donnie going to do to counteract that? I don't know, but, uh, you know, I kind of figured Kale would do this because uh, we would have probably kept him some laps down if we'd have known the truth while, a while back during the race when he said it was three laps down. Some of them told me it was five, so, you know, we miscounted a little bit. Uh, you know, I just hope we can hold him back. I really do. Okay, thank you. Back to you, Ken. All right, we're into it. Ten laps to go to decide the $588,000 21st Daytona 500 between a non-winner, Donnie Allison to this day, and the two-time champion, Kale Yarborough. They lead by 18 seconds, and now the strategy begins. They have slowed it down a bit. They're working with Jenna Rosen, thinking about how they will run the last lap that will decide it all. It is going to be perhaps just one roll of the dice. You have to be absolutely right, or it's second place. So and nobody remembers second place, David. Well, they certainly don't. <coughs> Speaking as second place, but uh, so much depends on where the traffic is too on those last couple of laps. And there's nothing you can do about that, you know. Now let's look at the difference between the second place automobile, and you'll see here the interval back to the third place car as they come through the tri-oval in front of this massive crowd, over 100,000, here they come. They're pulling away fast. They really are a successful duo together. And I think one of the things that's slowing these three down is that Foyt and Petty are dragging Darrell Waltrip along, who's got engine trouble. Less than nine laps to go to decide the 21st annual Daytona 500 between Allison and Young. Speedway in an event which has dwarfed any previous Daytona 500 with six laps to go. The photo finish camera has been put in place. Donnie Allison stays in front. Cale Yarborough, who won $530,000 last year, stays in second. They have an advantage of 22 seconds over Richard Petty, A.J. Foyt, Darrell Welton, who will be remembered as also running this race. There go the leaders through traffic around Dick May of Watertown, New York, up in the banking. Five laps to go. The countdown continuing to the end of the Daytona 500. Two drivers who crashed earlier and both remarkably brought their cars back in the race, were figured completely out of it, laps down. They worked the caution flag, of which there have been seven. Back to turns three and four. Talk about an avenging shadow. Just imagine having him hovering around there behind you for 20 laps, right on your rear bumper. Knowing on the last lap, he's going to make that swoop That's to take him past you and lead the race on the one lap that it really counts. How will Donnie Allison scuttle the effort of Kelly Arbro to win this race? Coming up next on CBS Today, don't miss it, the NBA. The greatest of professional basketball is next. Back straight away. Allison goes away by a four-car length advantage. He finally got a breather. Allison has it evaporate, reeling him back in is Kelly Arbro. Now let's look at that battle for third, fourth, and fifth. There it is, Petty running in third, Waltrip to fourth, A.J. Foyt to fifth. Chuck Bound drafting along with him. The last lap strategy for Allison in this race should it go to that. Will it be? down to a photo finish. Well, if you come down the last lap, uh, run for the checkered flag, I'm going to do it on the back stretch because I just don't think we have enough room from the fourth turn to the finish line to beat anybody. Uh, the cars are all too equal for that. You'd have to do it in the back stretch. Donnie Allison. Sounds to me like he has to throw the block, and it has to be absolutely perfectly timed or he's going to be the also ran. It has to be perfectly timed, and he's got to use what remaining traffic is out there to his advantage, and there really isn't much traffic out there. 100,000 people on their feet watching these two cars galvanize to them, looking for any signs of distress from either automobile as they lap Buddy Arrington in the tri-oval. Kale stays right there, just staring down in that rearview mirror, Donnie Allison. Two laps to go to decide the most incredible Daytona 500 in history. A shallow lead for Donnie Allison. Kale stays there, moves in again. Kale reputed to be one of the toughest drivers there are. Car won't handle, he will manhandle the car into first place. 
Kale Yarbrough is one of the toughest men I've ever met. He is absolutely fantastic. He never gets phased. And of course, this is tremendous value as you get down near the race here where you've got to be making some pretty thick mental decisions. If you're physically right up to it, your physical losses make no effect on you and you can really think clearly and carefully. There's no doubt about it that Kale Yarbrough, the white flag is out. One lap to go. This is it, last lap. Stand by for a position. Two of the greatest fiddling here, fidgeting with first place. Passing some of the strikers in the last lap. Trying to take it home. It's all come down to this. Out of turn two, Donnie Allison in first. Where will Kale make his move? He comes to the inside. Donnie Allison throws the block. Kale hits him. He slides. finish between A.J. Boyd and Richard Petty. Down the back straightaway come the leaders now. Two cars are out. In the back stretch are the leaders. Watching for the leaders to They're still up in turns three and four. The leaders are up in turns three and four. Coming down, Richard Petty is now pulling out in front. Darrell Waltrip is in second. A.J. Boyd is in third. Here they come. Waltrip trying to slingshot. Petty is out in front at the line. Well, there he is. After a full year without a win, as the two leaders tangled in the back straightaway, they threw the block, it didn't work. A.J. Foyt pulls up to congratulate Petty. No matter how hard A.J. fights when it's over, he is a gentleman. Let's look again at that crash. Here it is, they're in the end of the turn already, spinning, sliding. The hopes for Donnie Allison vanish. Cale Yarbrough trying to win his third, he's out of it. A sad moment for these people, but for Richard Petty, hurt all of last year, driving most of the year with a broken and battered body, he comes home a winner today after 45 straight losses. We, if we can, we should be down on pit road, tell the folks in the truck for just a moment, it's, it's going to be some scene in just a moment. The 18-year-old son of Richard Petty, Kyle, out there waiting for his father, they have both they have both tasted success. Here is the finish again, ladies and gentlemen. Richard Petty. Darrell Waltrip absolutely fighting that car. He got the left wheels on the flat of the bank and was really out of control there. And here comes a $60,000 car becoming a 22-passenger school bus to bring his crew to Victory Lane. Richard Petty, the great master, has just recorded his 186th career, and, and there's a fight between Cale Yarborough and Donnie Allison. The tempers overflowing. They're angry. They know they have lost. And what a bitter defeat. A couple of very hard men, very hardly upset. And Bobby Allison has stopped by his brother to help. There's Bobby Allison's car, number 50. It's difficult to tell from here, but whatever Let's happened shouldn't really have happened. Let's go, we'll look at that again and replay in just a moment. We're into victory lane. It is absolute ecstasy for the petties of Level Cross, North Carolina. <laughs> as the second generation okay. gets ready to get out of the car. Let's go to Brock Yates as they're trying to get Richard Petty out of his automobile. Absolute pandemonium down here, Ken. It looks like there are about 300 people in the, in the Petty uniform. I, I don't know where they all came from. Richard's still in the car having a glass of milk. He obviously is just so happy, ecstatic. The, here he comes. What a man. Could this, could this have happened any better? <laughs> Kiss from his wife. <laughs> Richard, could you believe it? Have you been in a lot of races? Was there anyone ever weirder finish than this one? Well, I tell you, I lost some this close, but this is the first time I remember in a long time I won one this close. 
I tell you, it, it's just unbelievable. You know, come down here last week and uh, Kyle won, and we come down here and look up and win this thing. Hey, Steve, what's your doctor gonna say? <laughs> I don't. I ain't worried about the doctor, baby. I'm feeling. I'm feeling good, no matter what he's. I guess. Richard, did you really feel you had a chance? Well, I tell you what, I had a real good feeling as they, as they rolled down pit road that we had a super good chance today, and we run all day, and we was really close to everything. We kept getting through all the mistakes and stuff they was making, and uh, you know, I said, well, you know, maybe this is the day. And then when Donnie and them got out in front right there at last, I said, well, you know, if I can salvage a third, it's going to be a good day. And when I, come, I seen that caution flag coming off the third corner there, and. Uh, Yes. Second corner, oh, I'll tell you what, it, my heart just went right through me. You know. <laughs> Congratulations again. <laughs> Pandemonium here in Victory Lane. Back to you, Ken. 100,000 people can't believe what they've just seen. We're going to be seeing the crash again and analyzing what happened down here as Richard Petty has come home a winner in the 21st annual Daytona 500. One hundred thousand people have just given a standing ovation to Richard Petty in Victory Lane here today at Daytona Speedway. Let's look again at the incident that made him a winner today. Back straight away, there you see Cale Yarborough drawing to the inside to make his pass. Donnie Allison moves down to try to run him in. They touch. Cale Yarborough goes out of control. He slams into the side of Donnie Allison's automobile. They both start to slide. It looks like they're going to slide down to the bottom of the track. They come up on the banking. They hit again. They are now out of control completely. Kale still fighting, still trying to gain control. But the car turns look, around. The worst thing that can happen. Look at his arms going in there, really trying, flailing away at the wheel to keep this car under control, but there's no hope. Into the wall. At better than 190 miles an hour. A thousand feet, they slide and scrape and bang along the wall, come down to the inside. And then the track is open for this truly incredible finish. Richard Petty in car number 43 battling Darrell Waltrip. Here they come to the line. The photo finish camera was on the checkered flag and for a Waltrip going right down on the apron as he grappled with Richard Petty for first place. But there was no stopping Petty for his sixth win. A man who has lost 40 percent of his stomach in the past two or three months who drove hurt all last year who hasn't had a win in a long time comes home the winner of the 21st annual Daytona 500.